Hello, recording people, and welcome back. This will be scenario 19, as the title of the recording indicates. Just finishing setup now. Okay. So, <laughs> we need two regular cultists and one regular living bones for the beginning. 14, 14, and 10. Thematically, shouldn't one of these cultists start with Left's health? Alright. Since, you know, like summon the bones or whatever. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, I won't place the other letters for now, but I'll just place 1, 2, and 3 so that I don't forget about those. One, two, and three. Let me just quickly blow my nose, sorry. I'm back. Oh, nice. All right. So she moves how much again? She does a move two towards the altar and then initiative. Okay, uh, we just need our road event. Oops, that's not the right screen anymore. That is, we already did the city event. Yeah, we just need a road. Okay. Ugh, not great. Really? This is how things are gonna start? It's not gonna be hard enough. So everyone starts with two damage. All right. No, that's kind of okay for the mind thief. The rest it sucks a bit though. Alrighty. So we got to choose a card to lose. In both cases. Um, so how good is Dirt Tornado here? It's not very good, right? Yeah. I mean, I think it's about time for Dirt Tornado to. To get cut. The question is whether we should bring Crater back in. It's probably okay to leave Crater on the sidelines, I think. We don't have many ranged attacks this way, though. We feel it almost feels like we have a little bit too much healing, but it's just nice to have some healing. <sighs> Especially since we all just started minus two. I really feel like I want to make sure I have Nature's Lift. I mean, a three player party always wants a little bit, not too much. Yeah, I think this is probably fine. Okay, that's for the Mind Thief. Again, Mass Hysteria against the enemies we're facing. It's really not good against any of them. So, I guess it also remains on the sideline, unfortunately. And you. Definitely want to keep the stun. Definitely want to keep this. This actually got better now, so I want to keep that. I want to keep that going to keep that. So it's probably this that I'm cutting. I think this is reasonable. This top is fine, but I mean, I guess we actually don't have that much push. But first of all, now that we have Dimensional Divide top, we can use Fount more easily for effectively push. <clears throat> and we still have push on the, like, multiple instances of push on the Mind Thief, so I think it's reasonable to get rid of it. Even though I've been pretty happy with that card, I mean, at the end of the day, we have nine cards and something has to go. And since we're adding in one more move four, we can finally cut one of the two move fours. And the stun is just more reliable, especially when facing things like cultists. I guess this is going to be proving the path's chance to shine. I'm messing with the cultist deck, hopefully. All right, so we shuffle all these things up. I'll eliminate you and you. Shuffle this and shuffle all of these. Okay, so we can start in any of these five hexes. Trying to think if, we, if it's Rock Slide. I mean, Rock Slide is pretty good here. It's actually not, though. So what's interesting is I still find this really weird that we're allowed to place a 
an obstacle here to block off this door since it's not open yet. But so basically, we could place an obstacle here, which would block this cultist from summoning and damage both of these, but there would be nowhere to place an obstacle to affect this. Here, well, we technically could, we don't have a way to destroy it right now. We would have to bring our card to destroy obstacles, which would suck. And here we, I guess we actually can technically place, but then it can still summon here, so it doesn't change too much. Because we could place there and there. It would do something. Well, and then the Mind Thief, like, jump over here and hit that. But Mind Thief jump over and hit would be too late because we need to set up Mind's Weakness. So I don't think it's Rock Slide here. I think it's just actually a Massive Boulder, which is fine. Massive Boulder looks pretty good here anyway. I guess we might as well strengthen ourselves before attacking. Don't think going a little bit earlier is going to change much. All right. So Mind Thiefy, where are you going? I guess from here to there, then? Because we definitely want to attack cultists. But I'd also like to use Empathetic Assault here. Since I'm missing health, I might as well heal right away. And just getting the strength and round started sooner. And I'm going to set up the Mind's Weakness. I think this is reasonable. I think this is more reasonable. I mean, their attacks aren't that scary to me than, um, than needing to, like, immobilize and stun. So what are we up to? Call to Nether can only hit two targets here. Can do that plus this bottom. That's still four curses. Mobilize isn't super useful here since you're going up to hit. Probably stunning the back cultist is a safe play. start like here we can stun this cultist and still give two curses with anticipate i think that's fine 57 initiative is fine because um the important thing is that we that we go before the 63 convenient numbering so we can stun and invis this 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 way here will be blocked with the mind thief this one will be stunned so neither of them would summon if they get a summon here and again we'll also get to go out two curses which is pretty good so it seems like a fine turn Okay, so here goes. Yep, sure enough, happy that we played around that. Ooh, not happy that that's moving first, though. I guess it's fine. It's actually just going to hit the Mind Thief. Okay, so the Mind Thief uses Empathetic Assault. Move to Heal to Strengthen. Right here. The other thing is no one... Oh, no, yeah, the Cracker can move up there. Oh, so actually this does work out pretty well. All right, so Mind Thief goes there, and then we're going to use the top of Mind's Weakness. We did reset all, all the experiences, yes. To make an attack three... Targeting the cultists. Definitely focusing the cultists before the living bones. Every day of the week. So that's an advantaged attack. Okay, nice. Five damage. Down to nine. All right, living bones goes. And I guess it was also healing, which is another reason. Makes an attack three. Did you heal above his max HP? Nope. Mind Thief, has ten, Mind Thief is level five. Therefore, she has 10 HP. And we healed back to 10. Okay, so Bones attacks just the Mind Thief. It's a nice start. I'm liking what I'm seeing. All right, and nothing else. Couldn't possibly hit two targets while hitting the Mind Thief, so this works out well. So then the Cryheart goes. So we want to move to here to prevent Hale from making a two path to the door. Just Instead, she'll just go... Yeah, just go one. So we're going to move to there. And we want to move first because we're strengthening ourselves. So we gain one experience. Again, retaliate one. Ooh, retaliate one. We're doing it now. Most significantly strengthen ourselves. If if this scene of watching the two of them run around with these icons on the top of themselves seems like it happens a little bit too frequently, this could be a commentary on putting enhancement dots next to self effects on the bottom of move actions. All right, and so we're going to attack this cultist because if we attack either of these targets, we're going to hurt the mind thief here. Either way, we get the same amount of damage. Um, it's actually better to not attack the shielded target. Actually, technically, this gives us one more damage. And again, attacking this also gets one less damage than the Mind Thief, so it just makes the most sense to attack this one. It's not such a big deal that we're not focus firing this one, um, because the Mind Thief can stun one of them next turn, and then this one still can't summon because it'll be adjacent and have no space to summon. So we attack Cultist number three with Massive Boulder, and it is strengthened. We create Earth. 
Okay, so four damage goes down to ten, and one damage to each of these. Really, only starts with ten life. I guess I'm just used to the amount of health it has at seven because I've been playing at seven for a while. Six is so close to seven. Sounds like a Rebecca Black song. Hmm. All right, then we go on the um, Diviner. We're going to use the bottom of Anticipated Intricacies. Curse, range three, target two, creating dark. We're going to create dark here as well, gain one experience. So one, two, three, one, one, two, three. So we've got two to give curses to. And then we use the top of Dimensional Transfer. We gain one experience. And we're going to stun and invis this cultist over here. Then the cultists go, this one loses its stun, this one suffers two damage, but cannot summon anywhere because there's there are no open spaces adjacent. That's how we manage some cultists. Alright. So what are we up to now? It's a good question. Well, I guess everything starts with the Mind Thief, right? Mind Thief is certainly going to stun the further cultist, and I guess just attack the adjacent cultist. We'll have ice next turn, so I think we'll save the ice to stun. We can also just use the ice for bigger attacks. If we make an attack 5 here with advantage, we likely just kill the adjacent cultist. That's probably actually just worth it. Who cares if we miss the ice to stun? Because now we can always use ice for plus 2 attack anyway, so we're not missing out on that much by not stunning. Or by not keeping the stun attack. And again, making an attack 5 here has such a high probability of killing. Because attack 5 when strengthened. I mean, what is in our deck at this point? We've got... Uh, three zeros. And one minus one. Yeah, I mean, it can happen. Especially because we just drew a bunch of good cards. But it's still quite likely that we get the kill. I think that's worth it. So what do we want to do? Oh, sorry. Hale was also supposed to move one. I forgot. At the end of the round, she doesn't move two, going towards the altar. One goes to here. Another movement wouldn't take her any closer. So we do need to get to here this turn on someone. It could easily be the Cragheart. In fact, Rumbling Advance is pretty good here. It does one direct damage to both of them, so why not? And continues to block Hale. In that case, yeah, probably just attacking with Kinetic Assault is fine. The move ends up being unnecessary, but again, it's just an attack four, which is just sometimes fine. Attack four on the cult is kind of a why not. And so, Diviner, what are you up to? Well, why don't we take this opportunity to get some curses, right? And we can also consume that element to get a look for the future at the cultist deck. All right, yeah, this overall seems quite nice. Seems like we got a pretty good turn coming here. Okay, so be it. Mm, okay, so be it. It's fine. Doesn't really change much. So, Mind Thieves up first. We're going to use the top of Frigid Apparition, attacking Cultist number four, making an attack five with advantage. Okay. Well, we didn't even need the advantage, but the attack five did make the difference. So, plus one is six damage. Battle goals. All right. We're going to grab them anyway. We'll, again, we have a tendency to forget. We'll retroactively apply them. We'll try to avoid anything that would already have been impacted. All right. Cause a trap to be sprung or disarmed on your turn, or never allow your hit points to drop below half. Not very likely to never allow your hit points to drop below half. We don't have our our put people into things. We might have actually taken that card. I'm, I'm sure like a player playing by themselves would probably take that card then, the, the, the Otherworldly Journey, with this. Here, I'm not sure we would have, but anyway, this seems pretty likely. We can still use, like I said, the top Rift plus uh, Fount to do it. Kill one or more elite monsters, or have five or more total cards in your hand and discard at the end of the scenario. This is a very difficult scenario, so it's not super likely we do that. I'm not sure how likely it is we kill an elite either. There are none in this first room, but it's just a safe thing to take. Certainly can do it. In seven or fewer hit points, or your current hit point value must be equal to your maximum hit point value at the end of the scenario. I'm not sure how likely this is, but we're never gaining seven or fewer hit point, or HP, uh, XP on the Mind Thief, so we're going to give this one a try. Okay. There we go. Coin goes there. Then we use the bottom of Purus Edge, gaining one experience, and we make an attack one range three stun, so with advantage, targeting cultist number three. Okay, three damage, nice. Advantage is pretty good. And we lose the strength then. 
All right, then the cultists go. So cultist is stunned, means he does nothing and does not have the death explode this turn. Living bones goes, is going to shield one and heal itself for two. So it heals itself for one. Has a bit of extra shield, but so be it. Ah, so now we don't want to kill the cultist. It's not very likely we kill the cultist. We only kill the cultist with a crit. It's actually not true. You can't summon on coins, right? Correct, you cannot summon on coins. I really don't want to kill the cultist because then I'm, I guess I'm just missing out on one curse if I kill the cultist. And it's not that likely that I kill him. It's only a plus two or a crit. Although we do have a fair amount of those in our deck. And we're advantaged. Mm, but the damage on the cultist is so much more valuable. This is tough, actually. I guess I guess I don't have to do this one damage. The one move allows me to then rethink what I want to do with Rumbling Advance afterwards. That's nice. So we'll use the top of Kinetic Assault. We'll do a move one, attack four. We will attack the Cultist here. Because now if we flip a plus two, we can just not use Rumbling. We can, like, Rumbling Advance to... Well, I mean, it's really not going to change anything. We could just r default Rumbling Advance and get it back or something. Start all Cultists with coins. Yeah, where's the Smuggler when you need him, right? Smuggler, for, the, for clarity, everyone, it's a custom class. Not a regular class. I'm not spoiling anything. All right, so we make an attack four with advantage, targeting the Cultist. It just sucks to attack the Skeleton, especially since he has one extra shield here. It's just not a high-priority target. Oh, mm. that sucks. I mean, it doesn't suck. It's fine. Again, it just costs us one curse. If anything, we might just default this now and get it back, because I don't think it's necessarily worth just one curse. All right, and then we're going to use the bottom rumbling advance. Uh, I'd like to go grab the coin, but unfortunately, I do really need to stay here so that Hale doesn't move up. Well, it doesn't move up as much. I'd like to slow her down. So just one damage to that. I stay in place, and I create new earth with rumbling advance. Because if I go here, then Hale will move two, which means she makes it to the door next turn guaranteed. Here, we get one more turn before she goes to the door, which is good because we're still dealing with his living bones. And the Diviner is not going to move because the Diviner is going to use Envision here. Or, sorry, Preordain. Okay, Diviner's up. Like I said, I think I'd rather get Call of the Nether back and be able to use it later. I think I can do better than this. Plus, I, I want to get something back here anyway. I normally get back initiative, but honestly, we've got 8, 21, 23 now. Actually, 8, 21, 23, 30... 13. I think it's fine. So, well, anyway, let's begin by using the bottom preordain the path, consuming dark, gain one experience, and we're going to mess with the top two cards of the cultist deck. Obviously, summoners is a pretty easy choice. Oh, yeah. All right. All right. That's nice. So, I mean, like I said, against some enemies, it's good. Last scenario was underwhelming. This scenario, I expect it to be significantly better. So I am going to just leave this on the top here. I've eliminated the cultist now anyway. This will just be a reminder. When I uneliminate the cultist, I'll flip it back over. So now we know that we put the summon on bottom, and we've got just a standard cultist turn on top, which is great. Great for us. And then, like I said, we're just going to default the top of the nether, or top of call of the nether back, and use an endurance potion to recover it. And that's the end of the round. Hail moves to here, and that's that. All right. So what are we up to now? So we've got, we have ice, which we just forgot to create last turn. So we're going to slam the heck out of this floozy. So if we push first with the mine thief, then the cry cart can actually move and push into the, the thing there to do extra damage. That actually works pretty well so we kind of want to go at 13 because we really want to go before this thing can attack mm, 13 is a little bit annoying can we go a little bit later than that to 28 then it can still go at its 20 but it's still only one out of eight that it can go it's not super likely uh, but at the same time that's a lot more movement no 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 let's do this whatever so what if we have to use cranium overload we still got a move four jump. We're missing out on a move five. It's not the end of the world. I think that's fine. Stun and Viz on Hail is so good. That's true, actually. Although, kind of. This scenario is, is really... I mean, first of all, I love this scenario. It's one of my favorite scenarios in the game. I think it's a really good scenario design. It's a great escort quest. Escort quests are difficult to design. I find this one to be very good. Um, especially when compared to the other escort quests in the game. I think it's always interesting because you, there is a lot of tension between, like, you do kind of want to slow Hail down, but you don't want to slow down Hail too much because stuff's coming from behind. And especially here, with the amount of movement things have at level 6, the things that come from behind catch up quickly, so you really don't want to slow down too much. I could just use this to go faster rather than using this, but the Immobilize 
has a decent chance of being good in the coming room. And creating ice is plus two damage for us now. In fact, I may have been incorrect. Now that we have the Frigid Blade, we probably should be playing Mass Hysteria, actually. Because ice is so good for us now. Like, because this actually adds two damage to Mass Hysteria, which is good. All right. Um, and so we have to attack with this. So what is the Diviner up to? Don't have any elements. Don't really have anything meaningful to do with elements either. So normally this is getting moved to there. So the Mind Thief's hitting that to there and then I guess grabbing this coin. The Crackheart's moving to here and hitting that to there. Hopefully getting close to killing it. Let's see how close we actually are to killing it. So we've got an attack four here, which is three damage, and attack three, two damage plus two. So we're actually not that close to killing it, huh? Mm, so maybe we just do a combo with Dimensional Divide, just immobilizing and wounding it. At the same time, Dimensional Divides are going to be really good in the next room because they're living spirits. Getting wound on them is so good. Hmm. Hmm. It's not easy. What is the range of the living spirits? Let's have a look at that. Four. All right, I'm going to move this away so it's not like I'm cheating. I'm just thinking about past experience. So the rock wall's here. I think the living spirits are like here. So from here, it's one, two, three, four. Uh, they're reaching pretty easily. It's going to be difficult to... I mean, we can pull one of them onto it with Fount, but that's about it. That's about it. Huh. Yeah. So maybe it's fine to just do this here. Just as a guaranteed way of kind of like killing this guy off. This plus this, which goes after them. And what do we have for the room following? We've got shielding, which is not bad. And call of the nethering or disarming traps, etc. Yeah, this is fine. Ooh, actually, though, we're losing all our big movement, though. We won't have much movement this way. Uh, that's probably fine, actually. If we do shielding, we can even just do it from here and be effective. We don't actually need a lot of movement. Same time, that the teleport... Uh, this actually does feel kind of bad. Yeah, I actually, I think I want Dimensional Divide bottom a lot here. So I think I'm actually happier just using Void Snare top here just to make sure that the skeleton is dealt with. I think I'd rather have Dimensional Divide bottom to like go through, to be able to teleport through and do this or teleport through, but stack shields, etc. Okay, so we're up first to the Mind Thief. We're going to attack with Fearsome Blade. We are going to use the push of attacking the Living Bones. Man, miss my advantage on all my attacks. All right, so this is four actual damage, putting the bones down to five, pushing the bones to here. Then we're going to use the bottom of Cranium Overload. We're going to move to here, grabbing this coin. Okay, then the Kragart's going to go. We're going to use the bottom of Unstable Upheaval to move to here. Um, do we want Endurance it back? Yeah, I think we will. We want to get an extra turn this rest cycle, and we're happy to have an Unstable Upheaval. <clears throat> Especially because we already played um, Blunt Force and Kinetic Assault, so this is actually our only good initiative left. Then we're going to attack with Heaving Swing, and again, we are going to use the push, targeting the Living Bones. Mm. Alright. Miss you advantage all the time. So, it just takes two damage from the pillar, and we gain one experience. Okay, then the Diviner goes... It's annoying. I can't really even move up because if I do, then he's not going to move. And I want, I mean, I guess I could immobilize him instead. Instead of disarming him for two turns. Oh, we forgot to consume the ice on the Mind Thief. Uh, Should have been two more damage. I mean, he'd still be at one, but that does that would actually change things. Then we could just do a default attack and kill him. God, I've, I've got to get used to having the Frigid Blade now. That was dumb. I mean, there was no reason not to consume it. It was just obvious that I would always would, but I just forgot. Okay, okay. Immobilizing it has the advantage of giving us one experience. Also lets us flip an attack modifier, which can flip curses, which is not bad. Maybe even one damage. Otherwise, disarming it for two turns is nice, but I think next turn we always, like the Mind Thief can always kill it pretty easily early. Yeah. I think I'll just disarm it. Let's use the bottom of Void Snare, make an attack one on it. Why not? <clears throat> Down to two. And immobilized. Okay, Living Bones goes. Loses the immobilize. Does nothing. End of the round. 
And Hale moves to here. So we're going into the next room this turn no matter what. It's not really a choice. So again, I think I'll have the Mind Thief finish off the skeleton. This and this. Hoping that it doesn't do the 12 heal. That would be annoying. So I think this is probably fine. Plus this. We don't need to use an early initiative here because the Diviner can actually just teleport to here and do the... Oh no, actually, uh, the spacing is annoying, huh? Teleport to here, I guess. And so that means the Cracker can't go past the door. But that's okay. Being on the door is fine, I think. Yeah, I mean, whatever, we're not teleporting very far, but that's okay. We're just going to teleport to here then, because Mind Thief needs to go to here. So we teleport here, plus use the other shield. So we'll just stack three shields for the Cracker who goes onto the door. And we'll still have a move too. So the Cracker will have to move off the door the following turn for us to be able to move in. We'll just have to go probably at 43. That's fine though. And let the Cracker move off the door at like 28 or something else, or 13. Okay, let's do it. Oh, really? Uh, this thing. All, it, I mean, it should be dead, too. It literally would be dead if I just remembered to consume the ice. It's really frustrating. All right, so we go now. We're going to use the bottom dimensional divide. We're going to teleport, like I said, to here and give shield one, affect all allies within range three. And then we're going to use the top protective aura, gain one experience, create light, and do shield two, affect all allies within range two. All right. So then it's the Mind Thief's turn. We're going to use the bottom of Silent Scream as default move two to here, and then we're going to attack with the top of Into the Night. Yeah. Okay, so we do two damage to it. Oh God, the stupid living bones. Okay, so then the Crycart goes. We're going to use the bottom of backup ammo as a move three. One, two, we still got one movement left if we want it. We probably don't. Oops. One second, got a blue nose. All right, back, sorry. So we have two regular bones, two regular spirits. Let's see what the spirits are up to. Okay, standard stuff as well. So they have four health each. Only that, huh? Okay, there and there. There and there. All right, so the spirits are going to be attacking us for four, but we have three shields as long as we stay on the door. I think we just do want to stay on the door. The skeletons aren't moving up. So we get to use the top of rock slide now. We create earth, gain one experience, get to drop some rocks. So the real question is where we want to drop the rocks. One, two. We can kind of drop them more or less wherever we want to. Dropping them next to the bones doesn't do anything. The bones are healing for two anyway. So any damage there is just kind of lost. I wish we could hit this bones, but unfortunately the bones is surrounded there. This also makes their path longer, which I guess is a good thing. This would also make their path one longer, but also makes our path longer. Eh, it's probably not such a big deal. It makes Hale's path to the next room longer, which gives us more time. Oops. Interesting. I guess maybe like some so Hale's gonna go to there then we would still have space for both of our melee characters to get in front of Hale so that's probably fine like that just to create a choke point <clears throat> I'm not sure how, if the choke point is good or bad for us but it's probably okay do we do we still have heaving swing no we used it okay 
Because also having an obstacle behind them wouldn't be bad. So we could put the choke point a little bit further back so we can knock one of them into it. But we don't, I mean, next rest cycle we'll just use um, Rock Slide again to just execute them. So there's no need for that unless they heal first. But Okay, so I mean, this takes damage. I'm not going to bother with that. These each take two direct damage. All right. So, I mean, the skeletons just heal themselves and have some additional shield, and the living spirits go. So, the living spirits have four range. One, two, three, four. They're both already in range. So, they both attack the crack art. Again, add attack plus zero. Yeah, it really sucks to draw the curse there. It's not where you want to see it. I'm going to attack that you have three shield against, but oh well. So, we take no damage. And that's the end of the round. Ah, oh, and Hail moves to here. So, I think the Kragart, I mean, there's not really much to, I guess someone does have to move up. But presumably that's the Mind Thief, although we really want the Mind Thief tanking. We also just need to kill this Bones, but yeah, I guess, alright, let's, well, we only need move two, right? So this probably plus this. I don't think I'm going to be doing combat healing anytime soon here with the top of nature's lift. I will probably do some combat healing with the bottom earth and clod, but this just gives me better initiative for next turn. Uh, so we finally beat scenario 81 last night. Even with a solid group for it, it was extremely rough. That boss is nuts. Sun soul scenario item was clutch. So was the one I reface card. Yep. I know what you're talking about. All right, well, we're going to go early on the Mind Thief. I'm not sure exactly what we're doing, but we'll see. And here, I think it's in our best interest to go later. To hopefully go here and then hit, like, more things after they've maybe moved up with, uh, to flip some more curses. Well, we're not creating ice, that's for sure. Okay. So, the Mind Thief's up first. I think... Hmm. I wonder. Is it better for... So let's see. What What is actually going on in this room? So the bones have four movement. One, two, three, four. So they will make it to here, but as long as no one goes to there, they won't hit anything. Someone does need to move up, but if we just move to here, the, those will still focus us instead of hail. So that's fine. So we could easily just try to finish off this ourselves. I think that's reasonable. So let's just use the top of Hostile Takeover as a default attack four, targeting the adjacent bones. Now we get it. And then we're gonna use the bottom feedback loop to do a move for jump to here. Cause Krakart will go up there to tank. Okay, so then the Krakart's up. Well, looks like we're using Nature's Lift after all. <laughs> little combat healing, because we don't actually have to punch this anymore, and we don't want to go up and punch them. That's pointless. So we'll actually use the top of Nature's Lift to do a heal 2 on ourself and the Diviner, healing the life we were missing because of that silly road event. And then we're going to use the bottom of Unstable Upheaval as a default move 2, and move to here. So 1, 2, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3. Yeah, so the damage will be a little bit split, but that's fine. That works out well enough for us. And then we're going to use the bottom of Clairvoyance as a default move 2 or 1. So go here. One, two, three, and expand like that. Eh, I think we'd rather just grab a coin, right? For being honest. So we just do a default move to there, and then we use call of the nether, creating dark. So range one, two. So we can either hit these or hit these. I guess it's just better hit these because we actually deal damage to them. Here we're never dealing damage. Yeah, yeah that was why we healed because the road event. All right, so one, two, three, and then expand like this. So we hit bones 10 and then nine, each with an attack zero curse. Um, yeah, we don't hit that many targets. Don't attack that often. We'll use the goggles for this. Okay, no damage with two curses. No damage. Well, goggles didn't do much there. We do give them three curses. So not bad. Okay, so then the living spirits go. 
they attack uh, plus one, so normally four, but here five. Would have loved to have the shield here. So like I said, two will attack the Mind Thief, five will attack the Cragheart. So six damage to the Mind Thief. Ouch. And the Cragheart. Got and the Living Bones go. They have four movement. One, two, three, four. From here it's one, two, three. From here it's one, two, three. Yeah, so this doesn't actually advance anymore. Because again, from here, it goes one, two, three to there. And from here, one, two, three to there. This one moved up because from here it's two to there. Okay. And that is the end of the round. So we have to short rest early. It would be insane not to. Oh yeah, so then Hale moves to here. It'd be insane not to. If we use Rock Slide here, here and here, this executes both the Living Spirits, which is just so good for us. Yeah, that's got to be the play. Uh, so the Mind Thief needs to short rest, because we definitely need the Mind Thief's help dealing with the bones. <laughs> yeah, I got this indeed. She's like, ah, let me, let me at him, let me at him. Get out of my way. So the real question is, can the Diviner afford to long rest here? It doesn't heal us. It just gives us our goggles back, which don't, as we've seen, do much. Um, so I think I'd prefer just not to long rest. Oh, come on. The dagger. Uh, I actually don't think that there's anything that I care more about losing maybe than this. Maybe the disarm rift. I'm not even sure, though. All right, that's fine. I mean, yeah, I'm a little bit sad to lose that, but... It would have been much more sad to lose Dimensional Divide. I think this card is going to do a lot for me, especially the bottom specifically, but essentially both halves. Uh, no, I think I'll keep that. The only thing that I want to lose less than that is Frigid Apparition. <laughs> Come on. I mean, two scenarios in a row. First short rest, something we don't want to lose. Well, in the other scenario, something we couldn't lose. Here, more didn't want to lose. Perverse Edge, like these are our two best cards, actually, which is crazy. We're level five. These are still our two best cards. I mean, other than the Mind's Weakness, which is currently active, so not a risk. This is crazy. It's crazy that, I mean, it's one thing to have this happen once, but having it happen back to back scenarios is insane. Ugh. That's frustrating. Again, it's still, I'm, I'm sure it's short rest to reroll there. Or I'm, I'm sure it's correct to reroll there, and I'm sure it's correct to short rest here because Hale is in front. We like, this is a non tenable situation. Even with the Kragart executing the two living spirits, we still got the bones to deal with. If the bones flip, they're like all attacks on the same target. This could just lose Hale two thirds of her life already. So we just can't afford to let that happen. So I know I have to short rest. The the question is whether I'm supposed to reroll after Perverse Edge, and I think I am, because again, Perverse Edge is just really good, especially on escort quests, being able to stun enemies, being able to stun um, cultists, etc. There's literally only one card that I care as much about, maybe more. I mean, kind of comparably to Perverse Edge. So I'm, I'm again, I'm taking a one out of eight on the reroll. It's insane though. All right. So, Cragart short resting early as well. That's fine. I mean, do I like having heating swing? Yeah, but we've got rock slide. We've got early initiatives that we can't lose, etc. Um, so we need to just go as early as possible. This is a given, and we need to drop some rocks. So as for us and the diviner, what is every one of you doing? Problem is there's going to be a rock here and here. So there's not really any space to maneuver is the annoying thing. Dimensional Divide seems sweet. Dimensional Divide seems sweet. So what we can actually do is we can use Dimensional Divide first. One, two, three, four, five. Place the 
the mobilized wound rift here. And then we use fount, placing, I don't know, rift, who cares, somewhere. And we pull this one into the dimensional divide rift, which again is going to effectively CC it for the turn and wound it, which is nice. And then this one, the mind thief can actually do the ranged uh, mobilize on. So this works. Ah, the annoying thing is we hit 21. We've got our boots of speed, though. We've got to remember that we have those. So we're going to use hostile takeover. We definitely need some healing, so we might as well just use empathetic assault now. All right, here it goes. Sure, sure. Mind Thieves up first. We're going to use the bottom of Empathetic Assault. We're going to move to here, strengthening ourselves and healing ourselves for two. We gain one experience, create ice, make an attack to immobilize with advantage, targeting Living Bones number nine. Advantage is nice. So three damage, which is two damage, down to eight. Okay, then the cry cart goes. Gonna use the top of rock slide, gain one experience, create earth. Going to drop a rock here, a rock here. And we don't, can't, one, two, three, four, a rock here. Just putting it one out of the way. Okay, so that kills you, kills you, and does two damage to each of the bones. Ooh, only had four health, huh? Yep. Down to six, down to eight. Coin there, coin there. Okay, then on the Diviner, we're going to use the top of Dimensional Divide. First time. Quite excited. Place one Rift token on any unoccupied hex within range five. Oops, copy it. So again, placing it here. Yeah, we can't place it there. It's just out of range, but that's fine. It's actually close to the next room as well. And when any enemy enters a hex containing Rift, token this round it gains wound and mobilize <laughs> nice red enough of them then we're going to use the bottom of revitalizing fount place one rift token on an occupied hex within range three and i guess we'll place one here because it's just closest to what might be useful actually no i oh, know we don't have range for here yeah i was gonna say there would be good but and then we pull then we get to do pull two, target any one enemy within range three of any rift token and pull them toward that rift token. So we pull to here, which immobilizes you and wounds you. Hold on now. Am I an idiot? Yeah, I'm an idiot. Mm, oh man, it was going to be so fun. <sighs> Fine. One, two, three, four, five. I mean, it. I mean, I guess hmm. we can just place the rift here. The nice thing about placing the rift here is it'll be immobilized for two turns, but that's actually not better, in fact, because... No, no, so this does work. I mean, the other thing lets us move up one, but I think that's pretty insignificant. We can just teleport right across. Um, because the nice thing about it moving up into the immobilize is that it will be immobilized next turn as well, but that doesn't actually change much because Hail will have walked on top of it if it's there. So here we just get one more turn of wounds. So this is still better. I think I'd rather have one more turn of wound than one more movement. All right, living bones, living spirits have been eliminated. Living bones go. This one loses its immobilize. This one also loses its immobilize and takes one damage from its wound. Down to seven. And Hale just keeps on keeping on. Oh dear God, Hale, come on now. Come on now. Um, all right. So we go here, attack this one. I would love to have a uh, heating swing here, but unfortunately I do not. Mind Thief jumps across, attacks that one. What is the Diviner doing then? We have, we don't have any meaningful elements here. Guess we stun and visit this one after, yeah. So the Mind Thief jumps across here. And we, I guess we won't need more movement than that. So we can even just go do this at five. The cry card is obviously doing this plus, where are you, this? This shouldn't kill either, but 
Uh, the annoying thing is this one's actually the worst one. This one will just hit the Mind Thief. Well, the Mind Thief is also has a bit of a life issue. Because here, this will hit both Hail and the Cragheart. There's nothing we can really do about that. We can't CC both of them. I mean, maybe the Mind Thief gets the kill. I guess we have some flexibility regardless. So we should probably try to go after the Cragheart as well. But it's, at the same time, we want to go... Yeah, we don't really want to go after the Cragheart as well. Uh, hold on. No. Disarm Rift doesn't do anything. The Mind Thief jumps across to attack. If we push, it doesn't work because pushing puts it next to Hail. Unless we go before the Mind Thief goes. And we push into the Disarm Rift. But then it doesn't change anything. We're still not dealing with this one, which is the issue with our current plans. Uh, I mean, I think if Hail takes one attack, it's probably not the end of the world. We've still got a fail, fair amount of healing. I guess pushing this one would still be good because it'll stop Hail from moving. So we actually should do the push. Uh, then the initiative sucks too much now because we need to go before their 20. And ideally their 12 as well. All right, so stunning one <clears throat> and moving, I guess, with this. Let's go. It's not perfect. Ooh, plus one attack, too, huh? All right, Mind Thief's up first. We do a move four jump with feedback loop. One, two, three, four. I guess it is better to go to here because this blocks Hail more. And then we attack with the top of Cranium Overload, consuming the ice. Eh, we've got some so somewhat of a chance of killing, right? So this is, makes this normally attack four, attack six with advantage. Nice, got it. So six becomes eight, which kills this one. Oh, but then we need to go after the crack card. I'm an idiot. Because if we killed here, I didn't even think about that. I guess I was just negating the possibility that I kill. I forgot that I have the ice. I've really got to get used to that, huh? It's still better to stun this one, though. The Cragart won't kill it. It sucks a little bit, but... Yeah, if we just manage these things better. What could we have gone at? After 19? It's not so convenient. The issue is that they still could have gone at their 12. Oh, that doesn't matter too much, but they're 20. All right. So, yeah, we go. We're going to use... Yeah, I mean, this. otherwise this is doing 8 damage this turn. So we're not killing it. So we're going to use the bottom of Clairvoyance as a default move two. One, two to there. And then we're going to use the top of Dimensional Transfer, gaining one experience, creating dark, and stunning and invising this bones here. Okay. And the Crack Heart goes. We're going to use the bottom of Blunt Force, gain one experience, move to here, strengthen ourselves. Sadly, we don't get to attack. And Living Bones goes and loses the sign and is. And then Hail moves to there. And that's the end of the round. Well, I think I'll preordain. Oh no, I want to do this top. I mean, I guess I could do both of these. I definitely want to stack a deck though. Deck stacking seems good. I love the thematics of the Invincible. Yeah, I actually designed this same idea uh, on the Chronomancer. I really like the idea of it. I had no idea that it was on the Diviner. It was a combination that I like as well. Also being able to target allies, although again, the ally targeting almost never comes up, but still. <sighs> Kragakin kind of sucks here. Because we, I guess we kind of want to attack this with massive boulder, I suppose, because we don't really have anything better. And then we've got to just move with this. Again, we only get beat by their 20. One, two, three, four to there. Because this gets us to a coin and gets us further away, so we don't have to make a disadvantage attack. Massive boulder kind of sucks here, but I think we'll spend some time, well, try to spend some time before we enter the next room. Technically, we can actually, if we go there, Hail doesn't advance at all, so we actually have all the time we need. 
So yeah, this combo works, just doing a bunch of setup stuff. So what is the Mind Thief doing? I guess the problem is if the Mind Thief moves, then Hale does advance and she enters the next room next turn. We can actually just stun the bones from where we are though. So we can actually just do this and then do a little cheeky looting. In that case, we can actually have it all, right? If we go at 13 and the Mind Thief goes at 14, who cares if they go at their 12? I mean, if they heal, yeah, that's annoying, but it's fine, right? Because by doing this, we can actually consume the end, this dark here at 13, and then at 14, we create a new dark, which allows us to then use invi or anticipate intricacies top next turn. So this actually works out quite well. Again, it sucks that they do their 12, no, but they don't. And by the Mind Thief not having to move, it's also good for us because, again, it allows us to keep Hale locked up a little bit to buy us some time because we do need some healing. I mean, well, the Mind Thief needs some healing. So we go first on 13 with the Diviner. We're going to create light, gain one experience, and do a bunch of shielding. And then we're going to gain another experience and consume the dark. And we get to look at the top two cards of a monster modifier, our monster ability card deck. So we know this one. So I don't think we want to do the Cultist again. I think for now we're good on the Cultist. Um, living bones aren't going to matter so much the next time. We might face some living bones here that also be here. I think actually probably just the corpses. It's not very valuable, but the point is that all the other enemies, it's kind of random whether it's going to be useful or not. Cultists, it's good, but we are we would only see one new card, which doesn't change too much. Um, I mean, yes, obviously there is the possibility that we find the summon, but it's only a one out of five that we find the other summon. Being able to put the other summon on the bottom would obviously be very good, but I'd rather try to do that after flipping this card. I think, again, taking a 20% chance to find the summon isn't really worth it. I'd rather, like, having information about what the living corpses are going to do when we enter the room with them is pretty valuable. So let's do it for the living corpses. Okay. So they have two movement normally. Again, without looking at this, I know exact. Well, there's going to be a line of traps here, and I believe the corpses are going to be here and here. So two movement does allow them to get to the door to hit even to here. Getting plus one movement. I mean, knowing I have this on top, what I would have really loved to see would have been the uh, the no move. So here they go pretty early when we enter the room. But at the same time, they don't attack, which is nice. I think I would rather have them start with this. And I think I will get rid of this because it's actually kind of a powerful turn for them. So let's put that on the bottom. We'll put this on top. Oops. Not sure how useful this was. Well, now well, it lets us know something, I guess. Okay, so then we go on the Mind Thief. We gain one experience. We create ice. We do an attack one range three stun, targeting living bones. Okay, so no damage, but the bones is stunned. And then we use the top of Into the Night, creating dark and looting this coin before the Kragar can. Aha! That's what you get for your killing vermlings personal quest. All right, so then the cracker goes. We're going to use the bottom of Explosive Punch as a move four. One, two, three, four to there. Again, we're going here to block Hail, and we're attacking afterwards so that our attack is with advantage. And then we're going to use Massive Boulder as an attack three range three, targeting the Living Bones. Again, with advantage. Plus two is nice. So three is five, which is four damage, putting the Bones down to two. Bones goes. Lose a stun. And that's the end of the round. All right, well, the Diviner can actually immobilize the bones and stack some decks at the same time. The Cragheart. So then Hale doesn't advance at all. Although, at the same time, maybe the Mind Thief should just go back and kill, because we do need to finish that off. Well, regardless, we'll play these cards, we'll play these cards, and we'll see what happens. And the Cragheart probably just wants to spend some time healing. Is multi-target healing better or single target? It looks like single target healing is probably what we need. Well, we're missing five there. We're missing one here. Hmm. Also don't have this anymore. We also definitely don't want to move on the Cragheart. So if the Mind Thief run, Now, if the Mind Thief goes to here, we can still do the big heal. I guess maybe just like double heal turn. This kind of sucks because this is actually good for when we enter the room. Like I, I wouldn't mind having this bottom. I guess it doesn't do too much. We're kind of just left with chaff cards here.
Also, maybe a backup ammo setup turn? That's a little bit crazy, though. Just not playing the loss, but just having the time. But it's actually possible that we would have the time. So yeah, I guess playing these two cards here is fine. This way, we heal the Diviner for one. We heal the Mind Thief for four. The Mind Thief just ends up down one. But the Mind Thief also has Empathetic Assault still. So being down one is fine. Although the Diviner having one more health doesn't change much either. But I think this just plays are also less valuable cards. Really? Well, I guess we're going to be healing Hail now. Beating all of us, huh? So this moves to here and attacks hail. Minus one. Ooh, geez. All right. So four damage to hail. Well, that's unfortunate. <sighs> Annoying. Beating all of us. Huh? We could not have beat that anyway. Oh, we could have used our boots. Man. Got to remember those boots of speed. It would have been worth it to use the boots of speed to immobilize it. Oh, well. Oh, well. Unfortunately, now the Mind Thief actually can't even make it back there to attack, which is also kind of annoying. So, yeah. Mind Thief goes. In that case, I guess we're just not moving. We can set up the Augment here, because I think we're going to have to bring back the Mind's Weakness. This would just give us one free experience. Um... But it make, guarantees that we have to do this next turn, but I think that's fine. Yeah, sure, let's just set up Silent Scream and do nothing on bottom. Again, just to gain one free XP. Diviner's up next. We're going to use the top of Anticipate Intricacies. Gaining one experience, consuming dark, and stacking attack. We're going to do the Mind Thieves. Yeah, we're going to get a crit anyway. Eh, this doesn't change too much. Do I, would I rather have a plus one? Yeah, I think I would, because there's a chance I have to attack that stupid Living Bones still. So we'll put these two on the bottom. And we'll go with crit and plus two on top. Okay, and then we have the bottom of Void Snare. I mean, I can always teleport across, so I don't really think I need to move. So I'll just use Void Snare to attack. Gain one experience and make an attack one. Has a chance of flipping a null again, which immobilizes the Living Bones. All right, and the Cryheart goes, so we're going to do four healing on one target, two healing on another. So we're going to heal Hail for four, because that's the most important. And then we're going to heal the Mind Thief for two. Nature's Lift healing Hail on the Mind Thief, and then Earth and Clod healing just Hail. Okay, that's the end of the round. And that, I think, Bone's being annoying. So Hail, again, doesn't advance, which gives us some more setup time at least. And you're going to use short rest. So we need to deal with that stupid bone. Well, can we even? We'd have to do a jump. But I guess that's okay, because then after that, we've got to move five. Yeah. Right, short resting, bringing back our augment. <laughs> oh, beautiful. Beautiful. I guess we have to reroll. I forgot we had that there. <laughs> I actually forgot we had it there. Well, we're probably not winning this scenario now. So that's interesting. <laughs> oh, God. I I have really bad luck. I mean, all right. So the first question we have to ask is, was I supposed to short rest there? I think so. The problem is the Living Bones keeps hitting hail, and I can't really do anything about it. Um, I mean, the Krygart can't easily, plus the Krygart has like a, an obvious turn here, which is actually good, which is setting up rumbling in our backup ammo before we go into the next room. So it comes down to the Diviner or the uh, Mind Thief. The Diviner has less longevity than the Mind Thief, so it's more important for her to long rest than it is for the Mind Thief. Um, it's also, like, the Diviner can't, actually kill this, whereas the Mind Thief, again, can. All the Mind Thief needs is the move four jump and then just to go attack. So the fact that we get the move four jump first means we need to reroll because this is the way we deal with this bones, which again is is a bit of a problem for us. Um, again, which is only a problem for us because we, we missed for the Krygard as well. Um, but anyway, I don't know that wasn't here. <laughs> so we need to keep this because it's the only way we can get back past the living bones. I mean, we can attack it with something like this and hope for a plus one, but this just isn't very reliable. So that's why we have to keep this. 
and so we reroll, and then... I mean, it's insane, actually. Our two reroll... I mean, our short rests have gotten cards we can't lose into, like, the worst possible reroll both times. So improbable. So now... The worst part is we can't even go kill this thing anymore, either. Because we can't do more than an attack two. So, I mean, we have to... Oh, we, I guess we have a plus one. I'm actually kind of an idiot. I guess I didn't need to reroll. Yeah, all right, my bad. That was stupid. I forgot that we knew the top card. We could have actually just killed it with this. We didn't need to jump. At the same time, the jump is also important later on, but we shouldn't have rerolled there. Knowing If I remember... All right, well, first of all, I didn't remember that the Mind's Weakness is there, because it's actually been a long time since I've kept the, I've had the Mind's Weakness in a rest file while short resting. Because usually I just keep it up and supplement longevity with endurance potions. Yes, yeah, was dumb. All right. Um, well, we don't need to strengthen ourselves anytime soon because we know our next two draws are what we want. So what else are we doing then? Moving up a little bit doesn't give us much. We can go back there and hit it, but no, it's better just do this. I think. So we're going to have to set up Silent Scream. That's going to be our augment for the rest of the scenario. So it's funny, at least. I mean, there is something in humor. Um, I guess probably just like this. doesn't really matter. Just as a default move, or we can invis ourselves, or or some nonsense. And like I said, we're going to long rest on the Diviner, because that was the goal. All right, here we go. So, we go first, hostile takeover, gain one experience, create ice, we attack the living bones, it's dead. Because we have a two, we float off plus one, it has two health and one shield, so it dies. And I think we will just then use the bottom into the night as a default move two here. I don't mind if Hale moves up one, I think this is okay. We're going to the next room soon anyway, and certainly going to get two coins, especially because now that I don't have the mind's weakness anymore, there's a very real chance that we just don't win the scenario. So, certainly going to get coins while I can. All right, Living Bone's gone. Next, we have the Cragart's turn. We're going to activate. So I don't want to let her move two, though, because, well, I guess no matter what. So we're, we're going to activate the top of backup ammo, because it's time. And we're going to then move in place at the bottom of Rumbling Advance, which creates Earth, because it doesn't actually hurt anyone, because no one's next to us. All right, Hail moves to here, and the Diviner takes a long rest. Rolls for one, freshes goggles, draws some cards. Okay, so what are we getting rid of? How does Preordain the Path work with Hail? Since it's May perform, does, do we get to choose if she performs? Because if you... There are other things you can do, but yeah, May. So so we get to choose then? Because it's weird that, like, because normally it's the person who controls the character who chooses, but in this case, like, no one really controls Hale. Or, so she would insist. So we get to choose. All right. That's interesting. Uh, well, the short rest is at the end of the round. Might as well just do that now. Oops. That's more than fine to lose. Okay, so... Kragrat's busting in. So I guess the double shield this turn is pretty good, since that allows us to teleport across as well. Want to keep this, want to keep this, want to keep this. Yeah, maybe it's just time to lose clairvoyance. Maybe preordering the path. But again, if this can actually help Hail move, that's actually not bad. Maybe we don't need this so much anymore, but I really love this. I think I'll just get rid of clairvoyance. I've got some good initiatives anyway now. I think this is okay. So we need to go before the Krykar goes. That's not too difficult, typically. <laughs> um, like I said, we're going to teleport across to here and set up shielding so the Krykar can bust in all shielded up and ready. And so the Krykar can go at 21 then. Do this plus massive boulder, which is pretty excellent. And the Mind Thief is just going to go cry in a corner now. <laughs> um, I'm going to set up Silent Scream. I guess do the move four jump to get in, hit something, and go late. Silent Scream definitely better 
augment at this point in the feedback loop, I would say, for us. OK, so first the diviner goes. We do teleport to an any onic fight hex within four hexes of you. Whoop, to there. And then we you and then shield one effect all eyes within range two, and then we gain one experience, create light, and shield two effect all eyes within range two. Okay, Kragart's up, we gain one experience. Moved here to begin with, which is also gonna strengthen ourselves. Alright, he's got some stuff. So first we'll set up the room, then we read the nonsense. Elite cultist and three regular skeletons. I'm just going to flip this back over now so that I can do this and this. Ugh, the healing's annoying. Gosh darn it. They're going to heal away basically all the damage I do them, to them with my multiple splashes. God, that's a really annoying flip. That is an annoying flip. All right, so we have one more movement if we want it. Oh, yeah, we've got to put the stuff behind us as well. So, bup, bup, bup. It's one... Uh, so it's two normal cultists for three or four characters at C. C is here, so it's going to be cultist, cultist. Uh, okay, so... So basically, I get to choose if the... Sorry, I guess for the VOD people, I should read this. It was intended that you can control this movement. The NPCs in 99 should not move closer to enemies. The idea is that you can move NPCs away, but a FAQ after creating period in the path clarified that NPCs move like monsters. Okay. So... So we get to choose whether the whether Hale moves, but if she moves, she does just her standard movement. Okay. I mean, I guess that makes sense. Um, okay, so we have one more movement with Blunt Force if we want it. There's not really a reason to. Moving in further would just allow more things to attack us. Admittedly, we have three shield, and they attack for three, and I guess they do take one retaliate. But we also want to hit this one and this one, and if we move up one more, we'll have, I mean, we'll lose our advantage on this one, because hitting one of these splashes to two, hitting one of these splashes to three, so it's better to hit these two with our massive boulder attacks. So, yeah. Okay. Then we gain one experience. Did we already gain an experience this turn? Yes, we did. We gain one experience for a charge of backup ammo. We use massive boulder, attacking two targets. So doing on four, cultist four and then bones 10. Both of these are strengthened. Okay, so four there and four there. So in both cases, the attack is for four. Wait, did the cultists move before the bones? No. I didn't set that thing self. So down to 18. And then four is three to this bones, puts it down to seven. And then this one splashes one to all these, this one. So each of these take one more, and then both the side bones take two. Okay. And we're done. So then the bones go. So this one goes to here. That's not uh, They have four movement. And then this one goes to here. So they're going to heal for two, but then get retaliated one. So they're each going to go up one health. This one's going to go up two health. That's really annoying. All right, so we have the two attacks. OK, one damage will take it. One damage will take it. All right, well, we took two. Shield 3 is still nice. Still nice. Okay, so the cultists go. The elite here can't do anything. These have 3 movement. Two, 3. Like I said, they catch up quickly. And then the Mind Thief goes. We have move 4 jump with feedback loop. So we have to use our boots of striding here. Unavoidable. So 
one, two, three, four, five, I think. This gets us in a good spot. We have invis for next turn. Ooh, we do not have the invis. Ah, oh, we threw that away last turn. Ooh. Filled with regret. Okay, so hold on. One, two, three, four, five, six. This way things can't hit the Krykart and us. We can like hit this and stun this one or something. Okay, so we go to there. And then we use the top of Silent Scream, so we gain one experience and activate this. So we make an attack two. Um, we will consume the ice, so it becomes an attack four. Nothing else to do. Flip a crit, so our four does eight to the cultist. Putting the cultist down to nine. And because of our augment, we get a heal two range two. Yeah. <laughs> oh, hilarious. I mean, this is probably the first time I've ever use this augment outside of a boss fight. Like, outside of when I use Mass Hysteria and I get to have two augments up. Uh, glorious. Just glorious. We lost our two biggest attacks, so our Battle Axe is looking real good, too. Real nice. Alright, so stunning something and attacking. Do we need to stun this turn? Yeah, the problem is they can... Flip a summon, which we really don't want. It's only one out of five for them to do it, because we know one is on the bottom. Hmm. Hmm. Oh, yeah. Hail also moves. Just moves to here. Uh, so, Rock Slide is probably good. Ah, it's going to hurt the Mind Thief. Yeah, Mind Thief has infinite healing now, anyway. I mean, Rock Slide does 8 damage in here overall, which is pretty good. I don't think we really have anything better. And on bottom, nothing very convincing, but I guess just doing it early is good. In case they try to do their nonsense 20 stuff again. Same time we're strengthened right now. Would it not be better to attack? But Rock Slide also does damage here, which is nice. I guess it doesn't matter so much this turn. Rock Slide could wait one turn. We can take advantage of the strengthen for now, I suppose. Then we don't need to play a bottom for good initiative. We'll play just like something like this as a throwaway. Wish we had our bottom heal now. Um, what is the diviner up to? We have light, but that doesn't do anything for us. We can throw out some curses. I think that's pretty good. We can't quite reach the cultist to stun. But I guess worst case scenario, we could always compass the cultist. Although I think we need the compass for the last room. I think that's quite important, in fact. We could just stun one of these behind to slow them down. <laughs> the mobilized tra uh, rift would actually be really good behind us as well. I guess if we place the disarm rift here, that does actually stop this one from attacking the mind thief this turn. That's not bad. Again, if they go at the 20, this kind of sucks, but I think it's okay. And that way the Mind Thief can actually not do the stun this turn, can instead Empathetic Assault first, which is better. Oops, this need to be reshuffled. We don't need to use the push necessarily, and we can, so we can just attack with this, I suppose. All right, this works. Just have to hope they don't flip the 20. Ah, uh, 25. I guess there were two. Hmm. Whoops. Ah, so they have two things, three things before this, although only one of them. Is an attack. So we're first at the with the mind thief. So I guess we're gonna get hit. That's okay. I mean, it's not the end of the world. It's two damage. So where do I want to move to then? If this, if I stay here, this one will go to here. Then a rock here actually hits all of them. So that's actually quite good. So let's just move in place. We heal ourselves for two. Strengthen ourselves, and we make an. Oh, I forgot! All our attacks suck now. We don't have real attacks anymore. We're just making attack two. <laughs> oh my god! All right. Well, we make an attack two on the call to see. Yeah, we're really gonna lose this because of losing the mind's weakness. That's so insane. Ooh, a crit! So two is four. Down to five. Doing what we can. 
Okay, Craghart's up next. I'm going to use the top of Kinetic Assault. I'm going to attack number two here, I suppose. And we have a Strengthen, so it's in Tech 4 with Advantage. We have no more to heal. We're already healed. We healed before moving, so... Oh, yeah, we can heal at range two. I guess that would have been an argument for moving close to the Craghart now, but then, then one of these would hit both of us, so it still isn't any better. And heal is limited to range two, so we have nothing else in range. All right, Tech 4, plus 1. Minus one for the shield, so four damage down to five. And do nothing with the bottom of nature's lift. Living bones go. Okay, so this one will end up moving to here. It's going to be two attacks on the Kragart and then one attack on the Mind Thief, all at minus one. So one damage to the Kragart, one damage to the Kragart. Because they're attacking for minus ones. Ooh, okay. And four damage to the Mind Thief. Tank Thief. Okay, so then the Diviner's up. Hmm. And we could immobilize one of these behind us. Doesn't do much. It would just like kind of stop them like one more space. I don't think that's worth it. So, because yeah, they still don't reach hail next turn. We do need to get moving. Problem is, we just don't deal damage quickly enough now that we don't have mind's weakness. I mean, our party is kind of low on damage to begin with. The mind thief really is the most, and losing the mind's weakness. I mean, this is so unlikely that we win at this point. Already we're playing on plus three, and then we lose like the most important card. God, it's insane. Um, giving out two curses is good. But then what do we do? The disarm trap rift does nothing, but I guess we're just endurance potion it back. All right, so we bring void snare back, just playing it as a default top two, and we use the bottom of anticipate intricacies, creating dark and giving them two curses. Curses are good since hail surviving is the most important thing for the scenario. Cultists go. So the elite certainly healing itself because it's got to be missing the most health. Yeah. Does it heal three on itself? Up to eight. And then one, two, one, two. If any of these taking damage yet? No. All right. And that's the end of the round. So rock slide and do it early. Mind Thief, attack and attack, one with the stun. And Viner, not doing a whole lot. Huh. I guess we'll preordain to look at like the Living Spirits deck or something. I don't even know. Oh no, we can even do the Cultist deck again. Try to, I mean, there's a chance they flip their other, so what, they have a one and four here of flipping the summon. If not, we can flip the summon to the bottom. That's not bad. And then what for a top? Well, the void snares just don't do anything, so I guess we're just stunning something. Nah, that's unfortunate. All right, Mind Thief's up first. Oh, geez, this is more painful stuff, huh? So what we can actually do is we can push this to there, and then we can drop rocks here and here so it doesn't summon. So that's what we'll do. So we'll begin by using the top of Fearsome Blade, gain one experience, make an attack two, push three, targeting cultist number four. We will be using the push. Okay, plus one, so three damage. Down to five, gets pushed to here. We heal for two. And then we're going to use the bottom of Perverse Edge, create ice, gain one experience. We're going to attack and stun number 10 here so that it doesn't hit us. This is only on rain melee attacks. Yeah, good God. All right, so it's neither advantage nor disadvantage because it's a ranged attack. All right, we do one damage, putting this down to seven and stunning it. Okay, so then... The Kragart is up, so we're going to use the top of Rock Slide, gaining one experience, creating Earth, dropping some rocks, so we're going to drop a rock here, a rock here. Can't reach there, we can't block off here. Not much to be gained by placing any more rocks in this room, I think. So I guess we can just place one here. It does do, one, it does do a bit of damage here, so why not? And 
blocking, like putting something here, yeah, it doesn't do much. All right. So two damage there, two damage there, two damage there, two damage there, and two damage there. We don't have this anymore. And then our bottom action will do nothing. So then the diviner goes. So we're going to consume the dark, gain one experience using preordain the path bottom. And I guess, like I said, we'll just mess with the living spirit deck. Maybe the bones deck. Because red on max HP, red is on eight HP. We only got one heal attack here. Why? Oh, because we could have used the healing potion. Healing potion is not necessary. We're not getting attacked by anything this turn. And we were at six on our turn because we took a four last turn, so we went up to eight with our heal. Um, <laughs> um yeah, I think the living spirit deck is probably worth doing. Heal is on melee only. Yeah, I know, right? But yes, unfortunately, it is on melee only. Okay, so which one of these is more problematic? So let's see. Where do they spawn from? They spawn from D, which is here. So from there, range minus one, so range three. One, two, three. It doesn't hit much because we should have entered this room already. Yeah, so I'd definitely rather leave this on top and put the moving one on bottom. Okay, this does something. Not a ton, but it does something. All right. Cultist go, so you suffer two damage, can't summon anywhere. You suffer two, you suffer two. I gotta get moving, but the problem is we're just not dealing any damage. So we're never gonna make it through here. These things behind are definitely catching up. Oh, oops, uh, sorry, we still have the top of uh, dimensional transfer. So what we're actually going to do is we're going to do this on, so we create dark, gain one experience. We're going to do this on hail. By doing this on hail, this will stop everything back here from advancing for a turn, which is definitely worth it. So, oh no, because she goes after us. She'll lose it immediately. Ugh. Um, so I guess the best thing to do it on is probably just this cultist here to just stop a summon up here. Yeah, sure. All right, so we'll do it to this cultist so it doesn't lose the two health there. Uh, or it could be one of these living bones. This would stop two attack threes on the cryheart. Yeah, that's probably more valuable than worrying about the skeleton in the back. Yeah. So we'll do it to like bone seven. All right, so bones three goes. So these were just summoned. They don't go. This one, again, we stun. This one is also stunned. So number two goes, and we'll attack the Krakart twice for three. Take it. Great. Okay. That's that. Well, we're going to play these cards and see what we do with them. Us. We're just not making any progress. But short resting early, we're just not gonna have any cards left. I think we're just gonna play these cards still. We still get an attack two and we do one direct damage. We also deal some direct damage to our allies, but I don't think we can afford to go through the cards that quickly. Like we still got a long way in this scenario to go. Like I said, it's very difficult to imagine ever winning after losing the mind's weakness like this. Here we don't need to short rest. I mean, we don't need to bring... Th Come on, this is, like, ridiculous, right? All right, re-roll. Sure, I mean, at this point, we've got nothing left to lose, right? Yeah, sure, okay. God. I mean, it's just being taxed one life every short rest that gets fatiguing. Um, So the cultist can't summon. It can't really make it anywhere to attack. But it can heal, which is a bit of an annoyance. I really need to strengthen myself at the same time, though. Uh, I guess, worst case scenario, the Diviner can actually do her immobilizing attack to kill the Cultist. Because I, I really want to give myself strength in here before attacking. I like need this to actually do meaningful damage. 
And then like after that we can go invis and attack and then stun attack and stuff like this. Oh dear god, that's gonna hurt. Um okay. Hmm. Well, there's no world in which we kill this one. We still just we just have to attack. We don't really have a choice. So we're going to you and the cultist is healing, but not in a super meaningful way. All right. So we're going to use Empathetic Assault. We're going to move a little bit closer. Strengthen ourselves. Heal for two. And then we use the top of Cranium Overload to make a default attack two. God. Consuming the ice. So four with advantage. All right. There we go. That's good. Let's get an eight. I mean, you basically just have to get like our plus twos and crits in order to actually deal damage. Plus also consuming ice, obviously. And that heal gives us another heal two, range two. We're still not close enough to the Kragart. We just can't get close enough to the Kragart while those um, when with the multi-target skeletons. I guess the skeletons back here are not moving as good for us. All right, so then the Diviner's up. I suppose, yeah, just immobilizing this is good. I mean, we could... We could pull this to here and disarm it. That would also allow the Kragart to move up and to do direct damage to them without having to deal direct damage to us. But it would also lead to Hail moving up and putting herself in a much more precarious position for the future. Which I think is not great. Or if we pull this one to like here, then we go here. This actually allows us to execute the Cultist, which is good. I mean, with the Rumbling Advance. And attack this one, which we presumably kill. But again, then Hail's moving up. Then she's entering the next room the coming turn. But maybe that's what we need. I mean, we do need to start running. So, yeah, I think that's actually probably correct then. So let's first create a Void Snare right here. And then we're going to place... So the other cultists will move up too. So, yeah, then we'll place our other rift here. One, two. We'll use Font to place a rift there. And then we get to pull an enemy into a rift. Well, we do get to pull two towards a rift. And so we'll pull this one to here, which disarms it. All right. So then the Kragart goes. We're going to use Rumbling Advance as a move two or that does one direct damage to everything adjacent. So that kills the elite cultist. Does one direct damage to you. I guess I technically should have attacked first, but whatever. Then I'm going to use the top of Explosive Punch simply as a default attack two, targeting this cultist. Really would like to see a plus one. Really, really would like... To see a plus one. <sighs> we've also had a lot of misses this scenario. I guess we've had a fair amount of crits too. We're also advantaged and manipulating decks a lot. So it's a little bit different, I think. Yeah, that's unfortunate. All right. Um, I guess I'm just going to use my healing potion now, to be honest, up to 14. It's not like we're going to get that much healing coming soon. I'd rather be safe rather than forget about it. All right, so these cultists back here go. So this one has two movement, can't go anywhere. This one goes to here. I guess they do heal themselves. This is relevant. And this one is now disarmed. Okay, Living Bones. These ones back here don't move. This one is disarmed. So only number two attacks at plus two on the Kragart. Curse? Mm, minus one. Not quite a curse, but we'll take it. So Kragart takes four. And that is the end of the round. Okay. Well, we're definitely short resting on both our characters at this point. We're pretty much past the point of being able to long rest. <sighs> Come on. No, no, we'll keep this. Your roll. Sure. I mean, honestly, that seems like it could be pretty valuable here, but not as important as, again, my my biggest move, which also has a very... I mean, like this... Um, the immobilized wound trap placed behind... Our rift placed behind us is so good. There are multiple reasons I really want to keep this card. It's crazy. I've I flipped this two or three times already on short rests. Oops, no, that's not what I meant to do. Yeah, that's probably fine. I can't afford to lose what few attacks I actually have and rock slide, etc. Uh, okay. So what to do? Rock slide here is really good. Unfortunately, we can't really place the rest of the rocks in a meaningful way. Just because it gives us an execute. 
but I guess we just have to live with executing just by attacking. So Hale is entering this room this turn, so we also have to go in there. We know that there are zombies in there, and we know that they are going to not attack, but they are going to move up and immobilize, which is dangerous as well. She doesn't really have range to do what we want there, or line of sight. We don't have our push anymore either. We also just can't leave these things behind here. I guess going in and rock sliding is probably decent. Because a rock slide does kill this one here. This one still has to be dealt with somehow, but I mean, who knows? And in that case, oh, this is 23. You only move two. Ah, but we've got, but the init if we go down, it doesn't quite work. Because we, we kind of need to teleport through. I guess two movement does actually take us to there. That does technically work if we go after the brute or the crack heart. Oh, but the point is we need to go after 13, but before 21. Well, I guess we can go at exactly 21. Kind of sucks to use this here, but I guess we don't really have a choice to make our initiative work. Well, or we could do this going down to 20, but I think that's better. So the crack heart goes in, creates some sort of obstacle wall here. I got to move this one up. Looking, creates some sort of obstacle wall here. And then we create our immobilize wound trap, our rift on... Wait, how does... What happens... Wait a second. What happens when a second enemy moves into a hex containing another enemy but gains immobilize? I mean, I guess it has to move to the nearest empty hex or something like that still while immobilized. That's kind of weird, though, because I was just thinking about that, because we're going to create like a single file line. And they fuse into one boss. Yeah, exactly. That's what it would seem like. So I guess for us, then we just try to stay here and deal with this one. We're going to take damage from the rock, but I guess we're going to heal ourselves as well, so that doesn't really matter. Do we want to go in this? Probably don't need to. These things shouldn't really make it to us. Actually, these rifts will also trigger wound and immobilize. So how many rifts do we have? We have four, so we can place one more before we need to delete any. Can't. It can't, I say. It can't what? Enter the... What the heck? Interesting. Marcel! It's actually kind of significant here. So does it have to path differently around, or can it just not even advance? I mean, this is a very interesting question. All right, so stun also creates ice, which is really good. We basically need to create ice every time we can. I don't think we need to go invis, and I would like to have the big jump move. Plus, the immobilize can also just be good against the, well, against a variety of different things. All right, here goes. From uh, for gun circles, FC. Rift tokens can be activated by multiple monsters in the same round, but if a rift token inflicts a negative status effect that causes a monster to stop on top of rift token, then the monster follows the same rules as for traps. A figure cannot end their movement in the same hex as another figure, so treat the monster on top of the rift token as an obstacle when determining a monster's movement. Ah, so that's actually bad. So we can't actually create a conga line. Ugh. So that actually makes this rift worse than I thought it was. Hmm. That's actually going to make this turn a lot worse... Because then we're not going to be able to immobilize all the things in there. Oh, Yeah, much worse. Exactly. Yeah, it really does make it a lot worse. I hadn't considered this before, but it it actually makes it so that this rift can never affect more than one enemy in a turn. You can have other rifts which affect other enemies, but yeah, this is... 
Hmm. I mean, the bottom is still really good. I've been really, really happy with the bottom, so I'm still happy with this card, but it does make this rift so hard to use. So this rift won't do anything, then. Unless these move before the bones do. And in here, we're going to create, like, an obstacle wall again, but only one of them is going to get immobilized in it. So actually, maybe the Mind Thief needs to do the jump a mobilize attack then and we just leave this behind <sighs> annoying no we can't leave this behind whatever then there's like one of them that get pa gets passed or something i don't really know i think this turn is too good <sighs> otherwise it's just unfortunate 12 all right oh and 10 yeah that doesn't change much unless you can push through or pull whatever yep all right, so Mind Thief goes first. We're going to begin by gaining one experience, creating ice, and attacking and stunning. Number seven. Ooh, no. Because we're actually going after. So we're actually going to stun this one here. Because we want this one to die when we drop down the rock. Because otherwise it's going to heal itself and it's not going to die. I guess now this one's going to heal itself as well, but you know, so be it. And then we use the top of Into the Night to make it default attack here. Oh, sorry. So well, first... Advantage attack and then advantage attack. We'll do the, the one first. Oh, wrong ordering. So we do one damage to this. And then the other one. All right. So it does also just one damage. We've been so much better the other way. Classic. Okay. And we lose our strength then. And that's that. Cultists go. Minus one movement. So... One, one, two. Living bones go. They're healing. The ones back there haven't taken anything. This one has a stun. This one heals for two. All right. And then Crycart's turn. So we use the bottom unstable upheaval. We'll be endurance pushing this back no matter what. One. All right. So we've got the traps. So the the compass is super tempting here, but I, I think very much that I have to save the compass for the last room, unfortunately. Oh no, the thing we chose for these the living spirits, they're actually going to get to attack because this room is still such a Clusterfuck. Mm. All right, so we've got one elite, one regular corpse. So 21 health and 14 health. And this triggers one normal living spirit. Not that bad. So flip you over, flip you over. Both cases. You have four health. You spawn at D. Hold on. So are the rules for spawning this? Yeah, it's the closest possible hex adjacent to enemies, right? It is that. I don't get to choose. It's been a long time since I've... I've always done it that way, but here it actually does matter. Mm-hmm. I'm not sure if spawning rules have summoning rules. Ugh, this is a long thing to look up. ECO, if you're there, can you answer this for me? I believe spawning does need, when can't be spawned on that hex, needs to be spawned on the closest possible hex to the players. This is the way I've always played it, but here I'm actually going to, I mean, but I also just do things that are generally negative for me, whereas here, if I have some chance to eke out a small advantage, I will take it, because I need every advantage I can here without the mind's weakness. So I believe this has to go there, or there. But I'm not actually 100%, because this is the hex where I'm supposed to spawn it. Anyway. If anyone has an answer to that, we don't need to worry about it for the time being. But it, I'll need it by the end of the round. So, all right. Um, so we have one more movement if we want it. Do we want her to move further in? Probably not. Rubook says, when a monster is spawned, it is set up on the map at its spawning location or the nearest empty hex that location. So in the cases of ambiguity for the nearest hex, what's the rule? Is that just ambiguous? Well, let's just suck the FAQ. 
do we actually get to choose then? Because we might actually get to choose. It might just be that I've convinced. Oh, oh, empty hex. Ah, okay. All right. Well, that answers that question regardless. It is the nearest empty hex, so it always has to go there. In case of ambiguity, is it actually the closest to us, or is it just closest to the where that is, and it's then ambiguous? Like I said, I've I've been playing so long with rules like that are negative to me that I don't actually. I don't know always the real rules anymore. <laughs> um, all right. But so that's definitely good because then from there it doesn't actually have enough range to hit anyone. I mean the diviner is going to move. So. All right, where are rocks? So this one, the regular with three movement can't actually reach. Choose in case of ambiguity. Okay, thank you. So one, two, three. Yeah. So that's actually fine. And then this is because the elite will get immobilized there. Marcel, I found out that dimensional divide was a trap. It was a trap. I'm just kidding. I actually still enjoy the card quite a lot, specifically because the bottom is so good. But, I mean, I, I just came to realize that you can't ever affect multiple enemies with the same rift with this ability. Like that placing it here, only one's going to move in. I mean, here, actually, I guess it'll create an obstacle, so this just won't advance. But that, like, only one enemy ever enters the rift you place. Obviously, it, they can run into other rifts that you've placed before, but because of the fact that it immobilizes, you can't have multiple enemies go through the same rift. Yeah, you do affect the second one indirectly, although sometimes, I mean, in, in situations like this with the cry cart, this is actually okay. Um, in situations where, where like, you know, it's like the spot where you're like here and there's a monster here and you can't like, well, or like whatever here, it's just going to take the path around it, you know? But yeah, with the cry cart, it's actually kind of going to be okay because it'll actually kind of sort of create an obstacle wall still, which is not bad. But anyway, I mean, I, th I still think it's a really good card. It's just... The rift is significantly worse than I thought it was when I was first evaluating the card. Because I didn't actually consider that. Although it still makes sense, but... Okay, so we drop the rocks like that, right? Oh, no, 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 we have to... Mm. Rifts are strong in numbers. Yeah, yeah, agreed. So actually, we don't need to place one there because we do have to place one here regardless. So Mind Thief takes two. This one dies... Drops a coin here, and this one takes two down to six. And then these each take two as well, down to 12, and down to 19. Yep. Okay, and so then the diviner goes. So we're going to use the bottom of Fount as a default move two. Going to move to here. And then from there, we're going to use the top of Dimensional Divide to place a rift at 1, 2, 3, 4 here. Having it be immobilized there. I guess the question is, would I rather them advance more or not? How much do I want them to move up? Do we still have... No, we lost Heaving Swing, right? Nice. I don't know that it changes much to have them advance less. I guess it keeps hail safer for a little bit longer. Because then their normal movement from there... Yeah, I think it's probably best just to put it as far away as possible. Okay, so we place that there. Then the living corpses go. This goes to here. Which gives it immobilize and wound. Okay, and then the Living Spirit has nothing within range 3, so that does nothing either. Oh, uh, I don't believe I gave... Yeah, we were supposed to gain one experience and create Earth when doing Rock Slide. And that's the end of the round. Alright. God, look at this giant tide of enemies behind us. There's still this, which isn't even close to dead. So Hale will actually move to here now, because this does put her one closer. And that's actually a spot we're pretty happy to have her in. We don't have any meaningful elements. We can give out some curses, though. We can do disarming. It's not really necessary. Oh, sorry, this actually isn't disarmed anymore. I mean, it could stop this one. Hmm. Stunning could also do the same thing, though. I guess immobilizing could also. But I guess, 
Uh, actually, so this one actually works because it's a door corner, yeah. If we immobilize both of these, that does buy us a fair amount of time. This allows the Mind Thief to then just ignore that. Yeah. Yeah, I like that. Problem is the cultists can go early, so we need to do something that's also early. Because we have to play this bottom, but if they... I mean, I guess if they come up first, it's kind of okay, because then we'll mobilize them, and then the following turn we can go early and run away. So it's maybe not the end of the world. It's probably still worth doing a top that actually does something. Protective Aura top doesn't do anything. The stun top mm, doesn't really do anything either. We don't really care that this moves. Anticipating intricacies. We don't have dark. We're not about to get dark unless we do the stun. Then next turn we'd move. Yeah, so I guess that does work. I don't, I don't know exactly what we'll do with the stun. But it maybe does something, and it lets us then move next turn with Protective Aura plus Anticipated Intricacies, which could be useful. Hello, Themris. We uh, we forgot that we had the Mind's Weakness in our uh, discard. We rerolled on a short rest. Our rerolls on short rest have been spectacularly bad. So we don't have Mind's Weakness anymore. So we're playing with Silent Scream, and yeah, well, let's just say that we're not killing enemies very quickly. But we did beat the last scenario on plus three quite easily, so at least this is making things interesting. You can't be unhappy about that. So what is the Kragheart doing now? So let's see. The Diviner isn't moving this turn, just immobilizing. The Mind Thief has Mind Thief has move four jump, but doesn't have boots actually anymore. So the Mind Thief actually needs the Kragheart to move first. This is actually annoying. Or the Diviner to move first. But the initiatives just don't line up. And the Diviner can't move. This is actually really annoying. Gregor can't go before 9. So the Mind Thief is not really doing anything then. I mean, I guess just jump, like going here and immobilizing one, but the mobilizing the same things. So that doesn't really do much. Or I guess just attacking the skeleton then and maybe moving. I don't really know. I guess the spacing doesn't work. There's no way to really make it work because the Gregor's here for now. So the Gregor moving up would be good. I'd like to go attack the corpse, and I guess I can just do it late. I kind of need to go after it so that the, it immobilize actually works. But in that case, I'm just attacking the massive boulder. The question is also whether I should actually just use the compass. The compass isn't execute or does a fair amount of damage here. I mean, we do have to actually get rid of one of these. We don't actually have really any easy ways of doing that at this point. We lost the push here. We didn't bring crater here. Fount we have, but we have to move up a fair amount to even do it. We need to be here. I guess if we are there, we can use fount pretty meaningfully. So, but not next turn, but in two turns. Mm. I guess I'm probably just doing this then. Just doing multiple attacks with this. All right, let's go. Cultists are summoning. That doesn't really matter. Living spirits, minus move, minus range is good for us. Although I think it's still hitting. Uh, they're all going after the diviner for the immobilize. So that's interesting. Uh, cultists aren't moving. This actually means the Diviner can move if we immobilize this one. So that's interesting. Yeah, it's annoying that we can't make it through. What I wouldn't give for the ability to refresh these boots somehow. I guess I do have ice, so I could also just attack this. The Kragart also wants to move up, though, so maybe the Diviner doesn't need to move up, and the Diviner can just immobilize these two. It doesn't do so much. I guess it does immobilize this Bones. It's probably better to just attack this Bones for now, since I have Ice. This is actually good. So, yeah, let's just use the top of Hostile Takeover as a default attack, targeting Bones number 7, and we'll consume Ice to make this into an attack 4. So 5, so 4 actual damage, putting it down to 2. Not bad. And we heal for 2. And then we're going to do the move jump. So now the question is, where do we want to go with this? So this living spirit, how far can it actually go? So it has three movements, so two movement here. And it has four range, but three movement, here, three range here. So one, two to there. So if the diviner moves, it can hit the, can't hit anyone. But 
if the diviner doesn't move, which presumably is what's going to happen since we did leave this alive, I guess we can just stun that one and then we can move. Or we can even just disarm rift it. Yeah, sure. So let's actually just move jump to here then with the bottom of feedback loop. This works. All right, so then the crag heart's up. So we're going to use the bottom of blunt force, gaining one experience. Going to move to here. This is still slowing down Hale a little bit, which is unfortunate because we need her to advance, but it's not just yet that we need her to advance. Then we are going to use the top of Massive Boulder, creating Earth. We gain one experience as well for getting a charge of backup ammo. Getting two targets on this with advantage, and we'll be hitting the two corpses because ultimately at this point we just need to clear these out of the way. Well, I guess if we hit this... We could just stay here, and since the Diviner is going to move up anyway, that works. Because then if we hit this and kill it, that's actually not bad for us. Damage here is also useful, but this is a really important kill as well. Yeah, it's probably good to get rid of this. It's probably more valuable than just three damage to one of these corpses. So sure, let's hit number seven here, and I guess the Elite Corpse with our two massive boulders. These are both advantaged. Just moved in place. All right, so that kills you. That's good. And then the corpse. Okay, so four damage to the corpse. Down to 15. Hey, Ovid. Welcome back, Vidisent. Okay, so now the Diviner's up. So we do get to move. So this has two movements, so it can't reach us. So we definitely move to here. Then Hale's not advancing. This is annoying, though. Move back to here, because then we can just teleport through later. But we need to move up so that we can use the thing we really want to use, which is Fount. We need to be up here for that exact reason. Or we need to do a bend here, but then the Kragheart couldn't have hit the Skeleton. Because we could have attacked the Skeleton before moving, but then we wouldn't have had advantage. That seems bad. I guess we should have just not attacked the Skeleton. That was actually stupid in the end. Um... I mean, we need to move up as well, or move again over to here. The bone's behind a four movement. Activating the rifts this turn for disarms is also really good. Yeah, I really should have just let this one live. That was stupid. That was stupid. All right, whatever. Hail's just not moving, so be it. So I'm going to use the bottom of dimensional transfer. I mean, it'd be nice to be able to teleport more, but unfortunately, I can't go next to this. So I can only go to these two, but if I go there, then this is also hitting me. So I guess I'm just going here, dimensional transfer, and then I'm going to use Void Snare. So I do have to get rid of one of these. So yeah, we've got five rifts now. I guess I'll get rid of this rift at this point, because this one... Oh yeah, we actually can have this move into there and get disarmed. That's great. And so I'll place a disarm rift here. And all my rifts this turn disarm, which is quite nice. Okay, so then the Living Bones go. Four movement, so one, two, three, four, and disarmed. One, two, three, four, and disarmed. Living Corpses go. So the Elite is still immobilized, takes one from its wound down to 14, loses the immobilize. And the regular goes here and gets disarmed. Well, the Diviner is doing what she can. Everyone in this party is pissed at the Mind Thief right now. <laughs> That's basically how it works. All right. So the Cultists go. Suffer damage. And bring out some more Skeleton Buddies. So there, oh, actually I didn't need both of them. This one can summon, this one can't. Okay, and then Living Spirit goes. It has minus one movement, so only two movement. One, two, it's disarmed. Well, four disarms in a turn. Eight total turns of disarm, not bad. I'll take it. Fortunately, the damage is still the issue. Like, we can just not take damage forever, but not having the mind's weakness is so bad. Hmm, nice. Sounds good. 80 cent. 
Uh, I mean, we can just short rest even if we lose this, whatever, you know? One, two, three, four, five. Uh, we still just can't move enough. I actually think I may need to just long rest on the Mind Thief. I just need to get my boots of striding back. And again, Hail doesn't move. I mean, we're kind of safe for now. Almost everything chasing us is disarmed. This thing's not, so it does need to be dealt with, but presumably it can be. Actually, I don't know what exactly we're playing here, but... I mean, what I wouldn't give for a push. So the Elite is actually going to hit someone. The Cryer doesn't have a ton of life. What are those traps again? They are damage traps. No, I guess the Mind Thief can't. The Mind Thief can't. Uh, so we go one, two. Yeah, from there we can immobilize the Elite, which we just have to do. Gosh darn it. All right, we're bringing this back, like I said, because I don't really care that much about it. All right. <laughs> Surely enough, but whatever. So we've got to go to here and immobilize the elite. And that's kind of what our turn has to be here. Mm, we have cranium overload still. That actually works. We can save the jump for afterwards. We're just doing one, two, three, four. Leaving all these coins behind. All right, let me have a look quickly, Marcel. Yeah, I think that looks quite good. Thank you. Okay, um, so yeah, we'll use this actually, because then we can do the move jump afterwards. Mm. Craggy, what are you doing? Ideally going after the corpses, moving up and attacking, otherwise healing with that. We'll save, I guess, bigger move in this attack. 19 and 13 initiative don't make really any significant difference here, so we'll just play this. All right. Now this works. I don't know exactly what we're doing here either, but something. It's not going to be our best turn. Mm, okay, that's fine. Not going after them, but they're not attacking, so that's fine as well. I guess in the end, they mobilized wasn't necessary. All right, Mind Thief's up first. If Cranium Overload is a move five, what is everyone else behind us doing? Bones are making a bunch of attacks, but they're immobilized. Cultists are just summoning again. Sure. So we have five movement. One, two, three, four to here. I mean, it's still worth getting damage on these. Plus it creates ice, which gives us more damage in the future. So we do that with Cranium Overload. We gain one experience and create ice using Hostile Takeover, making an attack to range four. Immobilize. I mean, the Kragart's going to move up to here, I guess. So it doesn't change too much to immobilize. Uh, I guess we'll still immobilize the elite. Also, just damage on the elite is a little more valuable, probably. All right, so here goes. We're not strengthened or anything, no. Okay, so three damage. Down to 11, and immobilized. Okay, then uh, we go on the diviner. Oh, sorry. And then at the end of our turn on the Mind Thief, we're going to use our Minor Mana Potion to create Dark, because I think I just want to stack some decks here. Basically, like I said, I've, I've got to get good deck flips for the Mind Thief to actually deal meaningful damage. Well, even the Kragart could be good, because the Kragart... No, 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 no. No, the Mind Thief. Yeah, because my Kragart's advantage anyway. So, yeah, we're going to create Dark so that we can do something meaningful here. At the same time... I mean, the shield doesn't do anything. Cursing is not bad, though. <laughs> well, my thief definitely normally does more damage than the Kragart, but here it's true that the Kragart is dealing more damage than the my thief now that we no longer have uh, Might's weakness. But the point is that the Kragart's advantaged here. The question is whether the Kragart should actually spend this turn healing, since we have the heal here. It's just on the cry. It's basically like three effective healing. I don't think that's worth it. We just need damage more. So yeah, I'll take a look at Mind Thief's deck. I think that's better than giving two curses. Sure. Okay. So we go. We're going to use the top of Anticipate Intricacies. Consuming Dark, gaining one experience. Top four cards of the Mind Thief's deck. <laughs> well, in the end, we didn't need to do this. Wow. Okay. Um, 
Yeah, I mean, I think we want this. So plus twos are honestly as good as crits since our attacks are all just twos at this point. So yeah, let's uh, let's go like this. Beautiful. I mean, I guess we didn't need to do this in the end, but so be it. At least now we know. And then we've got the bottom protective aura. Again, I don't want to move to here because I want the Kragart to move up and punch. So I'm just going to stay where I am and do nothing with the bottom protective aura. All right, Living Spirit goes, moves to here, but is disarmed, doesn't attack. Cultists go to nine, down to seven. Summons again. Sure, I didn't want the crit after the ice. Hmm. Yeah, you're, that's a good call, actually. That's a good call. I was thinking I just wanted more damage sooner, but you're you're absolutely right. Yeah, the root whisper looks good. The biggest issue is the similarity between the rifts and the roots at this time. Um, yeah, you're right about keeping the ice before the crit, I think. Okay, uh, so then the crag arc goes. We're going to use the bottom of nature's lift as a default move, too. Going to here. God, should I fire off a loss? No, I've lost so many cards already. I actually don't have that many left. And then I'm going to use the top of my other card as a default attack with Strengthen, targeting the Elite. Whew, nice Strengthen. All right, so we get four damage. Putting down to seven. Well, we're putting in the damage we can. Putting in the damage we can. OK, Living Bones go. So, one. How much can you move? Oh, no, you were just summoned. One, two, three. One, two, three, four. To there. This one cannot advance at all. Both lose their disarms. All right, Living Bones are done. Living Corpses go. This one takes two damage, which is quite good for us. This one takes one damage. OK. So we need to short rest on the Diviner. The reason being, we need to use Fount to pull into um, the traps there. So we cannot lose Fount here. All right, that's fine. That is fine. Oh, and sorry. Uh, Hail advanced one. God, we've got a conga line going. We don't have endurance potions left, so fount we always have to use here. Might as well use another rift at the same time. If we put the disarm one behind us, that protects us from a fair amount of damage. If the mind thief moves up. Mind thief does have the jump move up. We do have ice as well, so we can hit pretty hard here. Want to keep this, and I guess this. Yeah, so with this. So if we go 21, which might have to be 11. No, 21 should be fine here. Does hail advance? Yeah, hail. Oh, no, you're right. Hail doesn't advance. Ugh, darn it. You're right. Oh, that sucks. Yeah, I mean, I think it makes sense just to do the Disarm Rifts here. The Wound Rift is interesting, but more difficult, I think. All right, and old Craggy just making some attacks. Well, here we go. Okay, so cultists are up first. Can't possibly advance. Yeah, so do nothing. All right, 
Uh, 21 is going to be fine here. Oh, God, they were going to mess with my ice, too. That was scary. So then we're going to go with a move four jump. Three to here. This is annoying. No, it's okay. Yep. We're going to go to there. And then we're going to use the top of feedback loop. Oh, sorry, as into the night as a default attack two. Plus consume the ice. Four. Plus two here. It's a six. Bring this down to five. Then it is the Krykart's turn. We're going to begin by using the top of Kinetic Assault to make an attack five on the elite. So we need to just get plus zero higher here. Okay, that'll do. That'll do. So you're saying there's a chance. And then no reason to advance more than just the coin. So we'll just move to the coin. It's annoying that the Diviner being here means Hale's only going to advance one. Hale's actually maybe in a bit of trouble here. Eh, she should be okay. It's just the Living Spirit attacking her. We do need her to move more, though. So then we go at 21. So first things first, we're going to use the bottom of Fount. Get rid of this, this rift. Place a rift here and pull toward it. I guess this one's actually maybe better. Doesn't change much. This is two from the Krykart. One, two, three, four. Yeah, it's just this one's closer to the Mind Thief, so it is better to clear this. So then we pull into this rift. And the rift is in the trap. The trap is... Da, 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 da. Seven damage. There's a rift here now. So we've got our one, two, three, four, five rifts. And then we use the top of Void Snare, placing a rift. Oh, sorry, I guess this rift at this point. Actually, no, I don't really care about having all these rifts here. Uh, I guess we get rid of this one. Uh, here. Because this will at least stop the bones from attacking Hale. No, Hale's not going to advance because the bones are going to block this spot. Oh, God. Oh, God. Uh, that's so bad. But I don't think there's anything I can do about that. I mean, I had to pull into this. So I'm just going to have to get this bones out of the way now. Problem is that this one makes it up, right? Minus one, three movement. Yeah, it does. And then Hale's stuck here forever. And then we lose. So what if I don't pull into the trap? So that's, I guess, the question at this point. I would have to move here instead. Uh, compass. It's true that we haven't, we could still do the Kragart's turn. What would the compass even allow us to do, though? So we would have to compass into the trap instead. God, not having the compass for the last room is a disaster, though. It's so important to have the compass to make a, like, to make an opening at the altar. <sighs> but yeah, I mean, obviously if she gets trapped here, I just lose. So in that case, the Diviner has to, yeah, yeah, all right. So you're right, because the Krygart's before the Diviner, so we can still compass. The Diviner's turn doesn't have any new information yet, so. All right, so in that case, I mean, I guess we should still have a, oh yeah, we just don't have that rift. We still have this rift, so the Krygart has to use this the compass to move this regular corpse into this uh, coin. Oh, also, wait, the Krygart was here when the Mind Thief went? The Mind Thief actually would have healed the, oh no, we don't have that augment up. Oops, nope. All right, never mind. Yep. So we use the compass. Oh God, that hurts. But I think yeah, it's the only way. So then we still create the disarm rift there as the diviner, and then we just do the bottom of revitalizing fount as a default move to here. Now we'll get attacked by the living spirit. I guess that's okay. 
We could go invis, but there's no reason to. And this way, Hale will still have a way to advance. I'm missing the top of preordaining the path right now. That extra two movement could make a big difference. All right. So the bones go. Which one? So this one has three movement. One, two, three. Disarmed. Um, this one moves to here. It's disarmed. And none of the rest move because they can't find focus. Corpse eliminated. Living spirit attacks at plus one. Good thing that I didn't put the ice on top. <laughs> A dear god. So four, actually five, targeting a diviner. Curse, nice. Well, good thing we still got a fair number of curses in their deck. Okay, and hail advances. So there's no reason to open the door just yet. Stunning this doesn't really do anything, though. Mm. I mean, should we just go in to start fighting the stuff in there? To start clearing space and just let Hale, like, I don't know, kind of derp around back here? I guess we can create another rift here. Like we can move here and create the immobilize wound rift here. Or like even here so this gets stuck or something. Yeah, that's probably fine. Also, no, but I don't have dark to anticipate. This is fine. So yeah, we don't long rest. So we're gonna run in with the mind thief and the crag heart and start fighting the stuff in there to try to make space to get hail through. But the problem is if this gets blocked, then hail will stop moving again. So we'd have to move at least a bit more on the crack heart. Yeah, but I mean, if we have, we don't have the compass to make space in there anymore. All right, losing a stable people is fine. We have our boots of striding, I guess, on the crack heart. So we can still move with this so that we can attack with massive boulder, which I think is the best thing to do. We'll worry about using rock slide afterwards. And as for you, I don't even know what you're doing. Should we maybe just long rest this turn on the Mind Thief? It doesn't give us much. Moving to the door doesn't give us much either, but... <sighs> We're just running out of options. All right, let's go. Cultists are summoning again. All right, that's a reason to not enter the next room. Oh, that's rough, though. God, there aren't enough skeletons out here. Hey, Doom Drake. I hope all goes well too, but I'm not so sure. Okay. Um, so what does the Mind Thief do? If we open the door this turn, we know that the cultists which are in this room are going to summon, which is going to make it harder for us to get through this room. So it's probably not, I mean, like basically not opening the door this turn is killing, like, I think there are two cultists, maybe even three. I think two though. Is essentially like killing two skeletons. So it's got to be correct to not move. It sucks because we wasted, like, we're wasting Kragart's best cards. But even the Kragart's best cards aren't as good as, again, just killing two Living Bones. So on the Mind Thief, we're just going to use Empathetic Assault. And we're going to move to this coin here. And we're strengthened. I guess we don't actually want to be strengthened. Yeah, I guess we're not going to strengthen ourselves. We're just going to move there as a default. Because we want both the plus twos. Okay, so then the Diviner goes. So we're going to do a default move two at the bottom of Protective Aura, moving to here. Gregor will have to move, but that's fine. And then we're going to use the top of Dimensional Divide. We're going to get rid of, I guess, again, this rift. I don't really care about. We, I guess we have one, two, three, four, five. Yeah. We're going to place the rift here with Dimensional Divide. OK, so the Living Bones go first.
this is interesting though. All right, I have another question, everyone, in terms of the the immobilized rift and the nonsense. I mean, because I guess it maybe changes what I would do in my turn. How does this work? So I understand that basically the monsters will treat another monster on the immobilized rift as a an obstacle, but as it turns out, flying monsters don't care about obstacles. It's also really weird how this would work. So what the living spirit... So let me explain the situation. So what's going to happen, presumably, if I do what I did here? Because now I actually have to understand how this works before I make my decision. So the living bones is going to go first. I mean, I guess this one's going to move... Do some nonsense, but whatever. This living bones is going to move into this rift, and it's going to get immobilized and wounded in this rift. So at that point... So what? It gets immobilized in the next... So it moves through and gets immobilized in the next space? How, is that really how it's supposed to work then? I mean, I guess you designed it. So the, the living spirit will consider that it can move through and that it'll move through and get wounded and immobilized in the, the space after it? This is so weird. So it'll, it'll still move while immobilized? That's the easiest ruling. Yeah, this, is, this gets messy, huh? Yeah, yeah. Well, so the other question is whether it would move through and get immobilized and wounded afterwards, or whether it would just not move. Yeah, yeah, no. ECO did link the ruling in the FAQ, which is related to how it is an op it's treated as an obstacle. But again, flying enemies don't care about obstacles. That's why we get into this problem. So yes, obviously the bones will go here, and even if there were other spaces past this, like imagine this wasn't weren't here, wasn't here, this bones then wouldn't advance because it considers that there's an obstacle here, so it can't advance at all, so it would just stay where it is. That's quite clear. But the question is how a flying enemy in interacts with an obstacle. Oh, mobile isn't flying there was? Okay. I'm still curious. Because the other possibility is just that this doesn't advance at all. Both of these are relevant. Uh, but it's not in the FAQ, I guess. Let's see. Uh, flying enemies aren't unaffected by rifts. Yeah, yeah, this is the kind of the opposite of that situation. And again, we have this from the FAQ. What happens when two enemies move through the same rift during the same round? Rift tokens can be activated by multiple monsters in the same round, but if a rift token inflicts a negative status effect that causes the monster to stop on top of a rift token, then the other monster follows the same rules for traps. A figure cannot end their movement in the same hex as another figure, so treat the monster on top of the rift token as an obstacle when determining a monster's movement. But again... Treating it as an obstacle for a flying monster doesn't matter because flying monsters can move past obstacles. So I my I, I actually think that the correct ruling is that this just doesn't move either. Because it can't possibly move to here. I think that it's just the wording in the FAQ which is incorrect. Flying monster moves past, normal monsters stop. But, I mean, this is so weird, though. Why does a flying, like, why do two different types of monsters treat it differently, though? Like, why can a flying monster move one more space when immobilized, but a non-flying monster can't? I would, I would disagree. I would say that the easiest ruling would be that they all treat it the same way. They treat it not as an obstacle, but as an impassable space or something like that. There's not really a word for this, but basically that 
that this also, just like a, a melee, mo a non-flying monster, considers that it can't move past. Because this is my point. Why would... All right, again. Yeah, I guess as a wall? Yeah, that, that would be the word. Because, again, it has to go to an adjacent after moving into that space. I, I understand what it does, but my point is, why... <laughs> Why can a flying monster move one more space when immobilized, but a non-flying monster cannot? Like, again, imagine that this is like this. So this will go one, two, three, here, immobilized, wounded. This will just stay here and not move at all. Why do these two behave differently when they're both affected in the same way by both immobilize and the rift? This doesn't make sense to me. To me, this is inconsistent. This has nothing to do with the nature of flying. It just has the nature to do with the nature of... Does the rift say when a monster crosses it? it... But... <laughs> You're still kind of missing the point, though. The the falls... So why doesn't like this just fall into an adjacent... He I mean, I don't know. I So the rift does say a monster gets immobilized when it enters the rift. Because this isn't, like, I understand what you're talking about with, like, the idea of the flying monster falling down to an adjacent hex, but this isn't so much of an issue of that. That happens sometimes, so, like, there is already that ruling, I guess, maybe, but, again, it's kind of, like, an opposite sort of situation. Right, the spirit does get immobilized on the other rift, but technically, like I said, I mean, I could choose to remove... I mean, my question is whether the spirit should even move in the first place, but I could also just remove it. So the question is whether it should actually move. Like, again, I could have just removed that rift instead of that rift, and we could solve this question. Yes, here, I mean, we could say that it gets immobilized here, but this is, again, whether it actually moves or not. I mean, obviously, this is better for me, to it, it to get immobilized and wounded here, than for it just to not move, because obviously the wound on this is going to kill it soon. But I'm still not actually... Sh like, it's just, I don't know. It seems so weird to me that this... Like, again, assuming... All right, let's just assume that's there. I will keep this here, because I certainly... I mean, I want this. All right. For now, for simplicity, just move it. Fair enough. I think this is definitely something worth asking him, though. Because, again... It's not the fact, like, I understand the idea of, like, a flying monster falling down to an adjacent hex, but it doesn't make sense to me that the flying monster does that, but the regular monster doesn't. Like, because the regular monster could also have just moved and then be forced into an adjacent hex. Why is it that flying, I mean, the only reason that flying treats it differently is not because of the nature of the thing at hand, because, again, a rift is neither an obstacle nor an invisible character. Like, the rift doesn't actually do something like that. The reason why is because it's simply the programming for how the monster AI functions based on the FAQ. It, it again, just has to do with a word in the FAQ, not uh, like a, a fundamental principle of what's going on in the game, if you understand what I mean. That's that's my issue with the way it is. But again, if that's how it's supposed to be, I mean, I'll... Flying monster loses flying over an obstacle. It has to move to an adjacent hex. The situation is the same. Yes, but when a flying monster loses flying over a, an obstacle, it takes trap damage. Here, it doesn't. So that that would be still one distinction. Second distinction would be because you're actually like trap damage and push it to an adjacent hex. Um, yeah, I mean, well, then anyway, there's no no point in going over this too much. I think I think just asking Isaac is the most relevant thing to do. All right, well, so. It could also gain trap damage in addition to that, possibly. Yeah. But where would you place it? Closer to its goal or closer to where it started? I guess... Well, typically when an enemy loses flying over an obstacle, you can choose where it goes. In the Well, it's the nearest empty hex, but if there's ambiguity, you get to choose. And in this case, it would be player's choice, I guess. Um, all right. So that bones goes there gets wounded and immobilized, loses its disarm, and 
and again, now the rest of the bones don't move at all. Oh, wait, hold on, hold on. So this one was actually supposed to move first, right? How much movement did it have? Plus one. So five movement. No, no, but it can't move because there's a, yeah, there's this on top of a rift. All right. Let me blow my nose quickly. Sorry. All right, so living spirits go create ice, which is kind of useful. Go here, get immobilized and wounded. And then curse all of us. I forgot, Hale's deck functions as our deck or as the monster deck? So regardless, we're each getting a curse. And in that case, whose deck do we choose if it is our deck when she gets cursed? No deck is specified, it's your choice, okay. All right. Oh, this sucks, we're reshuffling our deck. That's so bad. That is bad. So much for our beautiful knowledge. Hale doesn't gain any curses? Wait, hold on. So I'm having conflicting things now. So Hale can't be cursed. Or I can choose the monster deck and put it a curse in. All right, I'll let you answer that for me in a second. Just cultists take one or two damage again. And summon again. Not enough enemies here, so good to add some more. What happens when a figure without an attack deck? Some NPCs get hit with a curse? Nothing. Okay. Ah, oh, thank you very much. Okay, that goes there, and that goes there. And then... Oh, wait. We didn't move for the Craghearts. <laughs> We actually just didn't do the Kragart's turn. Because I was like, the Kragart's not supposed to be here. Um, yeah, so we strengthen ourselves. So I guess we did want to be strengthened on the Mind Thief after all. Oh, well, I messed that up. Too late now. Too many things. Kragart went before all these things, so he couldn't have attacked anything or anything. Just moves, gains one experience, and strengthens himself. Um, yeah. Because we needed to clear the space out so that Hale could move. End of the round. So these are mobilized. This can still attack, unfortunately, from where it is. But it will die slowly but surely. It can also stun Invisit. That wouldn't be bad. Oh, no, we lost the stun Invis. So we kind of need to anticipate intricacies again. We'd also need to potion first to do that. What do we have left? I mean, we need, should probably go in this turn. So if we're going in, we're doing it with Rock Slide then, I guess. And like this move, probably, to move enough. My Thief is short resting. Mm, yeah, that's fine. Okay, so let's see, this like this. I think Diviner needs to short rest as well. We're on a clock here. Uh, found, I guess that would allow us to pull this living spirit to here out of line of sight. It's not actually bad. I think I'd rather keep that. All right, yeah, losing that's fine. All right, so yeah, let's do that. And I guess let's just do this thing again because it actually 
allows us to basically create obstacle walls behind ourselves. Okay, and so the mine thief needs to hop on in, presumably after the Krygar. Krygar doesn't have a million life, which is unfortunate. Okay. Anyway, definitely an interesting question to ask about, I think, regardless. We do still have our invis cloak, so I guess we can definitely go in. Uh, shall we activate feedback loop? Yes. It's time. Tank thief. But it, yeah, exactly. It didn't have an attack, so I still wonder. So it was trying to move as close as possible to its focus, so I'm not sure it could actually find a focus. is the question then, which actually does matter because in, in the end, it ended up being actually very negative for us because then it would not move at all, not find melee focus. That is actually really bad for us now because we had um, what, plus two, plus two ice crit on top of our deck and now we reshuffled and have a curse in our deck. So this has made like an enormous change in our ability to win the scenario based off of like what actually would have happened there because of the fact that it actually reached the mind thief with this. But at the same time, it's wounded and immobilized now, which is also helpful for us, so who knows, tough to say. All right, anyway, here goes. So we're up first, we're gonna do move five with Cranium Overload. One into the door. Into the room. Yeah, yeah, I'm just going to keep things as they are and hope for the best. God, this has been such a long scenario. I really hope to win. Ceiling thing. All right. Uh, our chest goes here. So what do we have in this room? We have two regular cultists, three zombies. Okay, that's good at least. Okay. All right, so these have 14 health. And the zombies have 14 and 21 health. Oh yeah, yeah for sure. I like I said I did want to I was considering saving this scenario until I got to level seven to do that because it would be so much fun. But I just, I mean, I kind of needed to get this out of the way. All right. Don't forget the skeletons behind. Yep, thank you. Good check. Good call. I would have uh, one normal living bone. All right, so two normal living bones at E. So here. Okay, <laughs> so um, we've got a bunch of movement left. So we should go next to a cultist and hit. We're going to get curses this way, which kind of sucks, instead of getting a plus two. But we definitely don't want to go next to the corpses, and we do need to be attacking. So yeah, so we're going to do this side gets closer to the chest. One, two, three, four to there. And then we're going to use the top of feedback loop, activating it, gaining one experience. And this gets us an attack one, plus we're going to consume the ice, so we get an attack three. Man, this, this would make such a big difference. So instead of doing five damage the turn we enter, we get a miss. God. All right, we have one shield as well. Such a big deal. All right. So then we go at 21 for the Diviner. Yeah, so that currently does have line of sight to all of the, to either of them. I don't really want that to happen. So I'm just going to use the bottom of Revitalizing Font. I'm going to create 
a rift here. And then I'm going to pull this toward a rift. So I'll pull it toward this rift here. Hold on. Yeah, I because I had line of sight to him and I pulled him toward the rift token. I don't have to have line of sight of the rift token I pull towards. Okay, so we have rift, 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 rift. So one, two, three, four, five. All right, let's just replace. See that he sent. Um, then we have to place a new rift token with dimensional divide. I guess we'll place this one. Like uh, here, or we can actually just place one into the new room. Mm, doesn't do much. Well, it could potentially allow us to use Fount in the future. Yeah, maybe that's relevant to pull one of these things off the altar so that we can let her let Hale get through. Yeah, I think I'll place this in the new room. It doesn't do anything to place one more behind. Okay, cultists go. This one attacks, and then one. So it's one, two, three, one, two, three. Either way, one, yeah. So to there. So then they both attack for two, but curse on the mine thief. We have one shield from our tank. So we take one and one. And we get two curses. Okay, then it's the Kragart's turn. So we're going to move with Explosive Punch. What happens if we destroy the altar? It doesn't actually say that it's not destroyable, right? What if we punch and destroy the altar? I wonder if this is in the FAQ. I mean, I assume it just still counts the hex regardless, but kind of curious, right? Okay, it actually is clarified. So, the altar beat can be affected by abilities that affect obstacles, though it is recommended that you do not destroy it, since that would make the scenario unwinnable. All right, well, let's not kill the altar then. I mean, it's not that I was really planning on it, but it would have been funny, right? So, we have explosive punch. One, two, three, four, I suppose. We can't really place many obstacles in a meaningful way here. Because the problem is we don't really want to place obstacles much in this room because we need to make Hale have an easy path. Hmm. So what is Hale's path going to be? So she's going to go here, then here, then here. That's going to be the plan. So we'll need to, I mean, I guess we just need to draw them, the corpses to the side and just tank them for a bit. We can always, like I said, font, font one off into the rift in a turn if we need to as well. Damage to them doesn't matter so much, but I feel like it still matters a bit. Anyway, we should definitely go to here, lose this, and drop some rocks. Gain one experience, great earth. So our health matters more, I think, than their healths do at this point. So I'm not sure that damaging the mind thief to damage them is really good. At the same time, placing a rock here does give us some pretty free damage. Can place like, because then Hale can still, but that, that actually blocks the path that we wanted for Hale, right? I guess if they move a bit, it's fine. Or then Hale goes here, then here, then here. So there. I guess we just don't hurt the cultists. So place other rock like. Here. All right. I don't know what 
else we're going to be able to do here. We're going to try. Alright, so the corpses all suffer one damage. Attack at melee range. They don't do anything. Okay. Living spirit has nothing in range. Loses immobilized. Takes one from wound down to three. Living bones don't move. This one takes one damage from its wound down to nine. Okay. Now we're going to play these cards. Should have used our mana potion last turn. Completely forgot about it, as usual. So that we could stack some decks. Because stacking decks is really important here. Um, yeah, I mean, regardless, I guess we're attacking with this. And we can see, we can either use this as a melee attack to get some shield, or we can do it to mobilize something. We'll see which is better. Sorry, inhale moved to, to there. Okay, here goes. So, corpses are moving. Cultists are summoning, which is bad. I guess if we block here, then it doesn't matter. All right. So, are we just stun this one? Yeah, so we're definitely using... So where's the Krykark going, I guess? We have a move two and then a move one attack four. What do we need to kill in this room? So the cultists are kind of out of the way. So it's really the corpses which are more threatening. If we immobilize this and we move to here... Problem is then this is going to be next to hail, and we don't have the compass anymore. We kind of need to draw all of the elite, I mean all the corpses away. Them getting plus one movement is really annoying though. Um... We don't have cards in hand, so we can't even take that many hits. Like we can't really take multiple hits this turn either. So I think immobilizing this is fine. But it, if we immobilize it, it's always going to be next to Hail. Hail has 14 life. We can't lose cards to prevent damage to her, though. So it's scary, regardless. So these are just doing nothing. That's a given. I guess stunning this or stunning this is the same. If the cracker goes here, we can stun this. Immobilize this. But then what does this do? One, two, three. Crack right here, it's... Would actually go towards hail. It would actually block the door with hail, so that's not good. Definitely don't want that. This is really annoying. Actually, the obstacle is stupid. Ugh. So I guess that means we need to stun this. Crack right is two plus one. Hmm. We need to get rid of this obstacle. We don't have any items that are going to help us with this either. And we can move some more. What if we move attack and then we do one, two, three, four like this? Then we draw them all that way. The elite would go to there. This would go to there. And then we just immobilize this one here so we don't have to deal with it. That's two hits on the Krygard who has no cards in hand though. It's dangerous. So we take a five and then a four. That is dangerous. But I think that's probably the best because we really need these to be away. And the cracker's just stuck in the corner with them as well. But we're just going to be like tanking, losing cards, hoping that Hale. I mean, we only have to survive one more round. Hale will win it for us the round after that. If we draw both of them over to there, then they won't mess with Hale anymore. The attack doesn't really mean anything, but I guess it's still worth doing. All right. I guess in that case, we could just heal. Then we only move four, but maybe that's better. And we draw the then we only get the elite to here and the regular to heal here. But if we have hail move to there, that's still fine. Because then then we just have to worry about preventing this from moving the following turn. Yeah, that works. All right. So we're going to use the. Uh, did we gain an experience or any of this stuff yet? No. I'm going to create ice. We're going to gain two experience here. We're going to do the stun attack, targeting cultist number two, and then the immobilize attack, targeting zombie number three, in that order. Okay. No, it's disadvantaged. So one there, and one there, actually. So down to 10. Down to 13. Let's get those conditions out. So you're stunned. 
and you are immobilized. All right, living bones go. I heal. Um, give me back to max, and they don't move, which is the significant thing here. Spirit also not moving, also significant. Okay, so then we're up at 19 on the Kraghart. So like I said, there's no real reason to attack, so we're just going to use the top of nature's lift. Um, we can actually heal the Mind Thief as well. Or Hail. Hail hasn't taken any damage, no. So we heal the Mind Thief for two, and ourself for two. And then we're going to use the bottom of Kinetic Assault as a default move two, plus Boots of Striding to get total move four. One, two, three, four to here. Or actually, so we're here. If we go there, it's the same, except here we also get a coin. So yeah, we'll go there. We'll still draw them over into the corner, I believe. Yeah, one, two, one, two, but lower initiative. One, two, three, one, two, three, yep. Oh no, it's actually, the elite's going to go over to here, then. But that's also fine. I mean, <laughs> then the mind thief's getting messed up, but tank thief! So the elite will actually go there, and then this one will go over there. That actually works fine. Because then we, we still have to draw this one over to the Mind Thief afterwards, or just immobilize it again. Yeah, it'll focus Mind Thief. But this is still fine. We still get the coin. This works. This works. All right. Tank Thief. So the Diviner goes. So none of these things really matter at this point. Giving them curses. We can only give one curse. I think we're going to do Anticipate Intricacies top. And we're going to look at the top of their deck. All right. Um, I mean, we have helmets, so there's not really that many scary things they can do, right? Yeah, the plus two and plus ones are mostly here anyway. So I think I'll... No, I mean, a plus zero is still good for me, though, right? But they've got how many curses? Still three curses in their deck, so no. I actually think I'll put the plus one on top, or the minus one on top, and I'll put the plus zero on bottom. And then I have the bottom of Void Snare. I'm just going to move to here in case I need to help out in this room somehow. Okay, so then the corpses go. Plus one movement, minus one attack. So the elite goes to here. This one goes to here, here. I guess we'll have it go to there. So the elite attacks the mind thief. Flipping a minus one. This we knew. So it was normally attacking for six. Minus one, minus one. So if we take four, we don't have any shielding this turn. That's fine, though. And we're poisoned. And then the regular attacks the Kragart. Minus one as well. So it was minus one, minus one, so it's two damage to the Kragart. And also poisoned. Okay. Living Spirit takes one damage from its wound, down to two. And doesn't have line of sight slash range to attack anything. The Cultists go. Um, so this one loses its stun. This one suffers two damage, down to 12. I still got to get the chest as well. That's important. Do we still have our move jump? We have feedback loop. Yeah, we'll have to bring it back. All right. We'll make it work, though. Um, so that one takes damage. This one doesn't. This one can't summon because it's got no empty spaces. This one was stunned. Actually, didn't have any empty spaces either. I forgot that those would actually go before. I didn't actually need to stun this, but I will. Uh, the cultist back here. This one actually summons. I'm, I guess I should technically bother. Why did I? Do I have a disarm bones over here? I don't know. I really don't know. I mean, it wasn't this one. It wasn't anything relevant at this point. Let's put it that way. Okay. I mean, this one also takes some damage. Okay. And then Hale moves up one. Yeah, we'll go there. Because then we can potentially pull to the rift if we need to or something. All right. That's the round there. So we're going to short rest. We're bringing back feedback loop for sure. Cranium overload lets me execute, for example, this. But without the move jump, I think I actually do want to keep this. Hopefully I don't lose the move jump. All right, that's fine. Also, takeover actually wouldn't have been bad either. But I think this is fine. Crackart also short resting. Yeah, that's fine. Us also short resting. Um, 
What else do we have in our deck at this point? I think keeping these is good. I'll lose this. It's my biggest move though, but it should be fine. Default move two gets me where I need to be. Okay. So, what's our plan? <laughs> Down to our last legs. So it's generally pretty easy. Even if these things summon, they don't do anything. We do need to make it to this chest though. So we need to do the move jump on the Mind Thief or just execute this. But there's no reason to execute this. It's better to execute this because this actually can negatively impact Hail. So then we just have to worry about this Elite Corpse. It's basically the only thing because these will attack the Mind Thief, which is fine. I guess playing an Execute also loses us a card, but we'll still have two cards to lose and we're at five. I think that's fine. So we kill this. This one is occupied here, so we really just have to worry about that. Can the Diviner help in any way with that? I mean, we can move up and do a Disarm Rift, I guess. Which should help. To keep Hail safe. Ah, oh, but the problem is if it moves here, Hail doesn't make it. It's two to there, two to there. So we can actually choose that one, two, one, two. Yep. So that's fine then. So we are fine. All right. Uh... So, old Kragikins. We don't have any elements or anything like that. There's nothing we can do that really changes anything here. I guess we can move with Rock Slide to here. Then we actually draw focus. But then this one is a problem. I guess if we move four to there with this, and we use Rock Slide like here and here. So we go one, two, three, four. So this dies. We go there. We place two rocks here. And, oh, we can't place a rock here. But the Diviner will be here. So if this goes to here, it'll attack. Yeah, yeah, this works. I mean, I think these are the only cards that actually make much of a difference here. So let's go with this. All right, here it goes. Last turn. Corpses are moving and attacking. Cultists are summoning again. All right, we're up first on... By the way, for next Tuesday, if you stream, maybe I might have a working Hive Guardian version. Yeah, I'd be happy to try it. Okay, so we're going to kill one normal enemy within range four. It's this one right here. It's dead. Then we make attack two, target all enemies adjacent to the target killed, gain one experience for each enemy targeted. So we gain two experience here. We make an attack two, first targeting cultist two, then corpse six. This is, this is technically a melee attack, right? Can we actually use the frigid blade with this? Oh wait, is it ranged? Wait, is this a ranged attack or a melee attack? I thought it was a... It is a ranged attack, oh okay. That's interesting because it's target all enemies adjacent to the killed target. So range isn't specified here? I would think that that would make this melee. But I guess it's because range is specified here. Interesting. See, Marcel actually even said, by the way, would you consider this attack melee? I would consider it. I, I would also consider it melee, but I guess it's, it's kind of weird the way that this works. It Because the range here isn't actually part of the attack, it's part of a separate effect. Like, I guess, whatever. Anyway, so I guess we can't use the blade. It's just like, clear the way. Yeah. Yeah, that's fair. Anyway, so disadvantage on two and six. Sure. I mean, the damage here really doesn't matter. Okay. So no damage there. All right, we did some damage there. Also really doesn't matter. Down to 15. Sure. Okay. Then we're going to do a move four jump with feedback loop. We're going to go grab the chest here. All right. Our chest is number 17. So fair warning, we're going to spoil chest number 17. 20 gold. Really? That's it? That's not very exciting. All right. So we gain 20 gold. We're up to 36. Okay. So 
then it is the Diviner's turn. So we're going to do a move two to here, default move with the bottom of Revitalizing Found. Then we're going to place a Rift here, and until the end of turn, any enemy that enters a Rift gets disarmed. Another Frigid Blade. <laughs> it's true. If only. Okay. Then the Crag Arc goes. We're going to do move four with Explosive Punch. One. Well, I mean, we could just grab a coin here, right? We're fine. I mean, one attack on us doesn't matter. Yeah. One, two three, four to there, getting this coin. We get this. All right, Living Bones go. They've got four movement. Can any of them reach us? No. This one's the closest. It actually gets disarmed when it runs into this trap any, or this rift anyway, and it has one, two, three, four movement. So I'm not going to bother with any of the bones because this would just take a ton of time and is unnecessary. The cultists go. Similarly, I'm not going to mess with them. They're, they actually do summon a bones over here. Sure. This doesn't impact anything. This one doesn't summon. They both take damage. So be it. Changes nothing. Okay. These ones just take some damage. Actually, some of them die. Also doesn't matter. Living corpses. So we've got the elite, which will attack the Kragart, and number two, so its focus is the diviner, which will go here and get disarmed. So the elite attacks the Kragart. Okay, plus zero is a six, plus one from the poison, seven. We'll just lose a card. What was our goal again? Uh, did we ever kill an elite? I'm not sure we actually did. Yeah, we did. We killed the cultist. We killed the cultist. We killed the cultist with rumbling advance. Ha ha. We have to be at max HP at the end? Yeah, that's not happening. Oh, well. And us cause a trap to be sprung. We did, actually. We pulled uh, one of the enemies into a trap. All right. Everyone but the Mind Thief. Good enough. All right. So we lost our car. Or so we lose a car. It doesn't matter which one. That's fine. Again, this one. So that, that, this, this. And then the Living Spirit. I don't think it can possibly reach. So it has minus one movement. So it has... Two movement and three range. Yeah. One actually gets disarmed when it enters this rift anyway. Whew. All right. Living Spirit's done. And Hail makes it to here. And we won. I mean, we left a ton of coins behind, which is not normally what we like to do. But we did it. I cannot believe we actually did it. <sighs> that was a, a marathon of a scenario. And it was tough. Losing the Mind's Weakness was a huge mistake. A huge, huge, huge mistake. We kind of deserve to lose the scenario after that, but we managed to pull through. This is not an easy scenario, so playing it on plus three and putting ourselves in a handicap by getting rid of our most important card. All right. How early did we lose it? Uh, we lost it when we were entering the third room. So we, we did still have two rooms of the Mind's Weakness, but... We still played more than half of the scenario, or about half of the scenario without the Mind's Weakness. <sighs> okay, so um, we're going to have to talk for a little bit, so I'm just going to quickly go to the bathroom and refill my water slightly, and then I'll come back and we'll do our post-scenario debrief. Anyway, be right back. Uh, did you use some other Augment instead? Sorry, yeah, I'll answer your question quickly, Cauldron. Uh, yeah, we used Psychic, uh, what was it? Silent Scream for a little bit. It was all right. I mean, we technically used Feedback Loop for one turn. It shielded us two damage. We used Silent Scream. It probably ended up healing us for about six or eight. They both felt quite terrible. I mean, we were making attack twos, which was awful. But All right. Anyway, be right back.
All right, I'm back. Whew. All right. So, what's a reward for all that? Plus one prosperity. Although the next scenario is the real reward. Whew, pretty close to three, actually. Only two away. All right. Um, we unlock scenario 27. And we get the party achievement, which doesn't really matter. Okay. And let's get 27 out. One of my favorite... Another one of my favorite scenarios in the game, actually. I think probably a favorite for many people. Quite a fun one. All right, uh, nothing else there in terms of rewards. So let's total up what we all gained. Oops, oh yeah, take the poison hail. Are you going to do 27 soon? Or are you going to wait so you don't miss out on a bunch of stuff later on? I'm not gonna do it right away, yeah. I, I'm gonna do some other stuff and then we're gonna do 27 pretty soon. Maybe, probably not next week, but probably the weekend after, or the week after. All right. So difficulty six, which is really five. So we gain four per coin and 14 experience. Let's do it over here. So this is 20 gold and 31 experience. So 20 gold puts us up to 56. And 31 experience. That should be a level. Puts us up to 86, which will be a level. By the way, Gripe, did you see my Gloomhaven card creator? Uh, I've seen people are using it, yes. I haven't uh, really had a chance to check it out, though. Yeah, I mean, that, that looks awesome that you're doing something like that. Definitely seems really helpful. People seem to appreciate it, so that's really great work. All right, so we did not successfully complete Fast Healer, but so be it. All right, kill one or more elite monsters we did. So we get a check mark. 13 plus 14, so 27 experience. So putting us up to 39. And then. Sorry, I was just distracted by chat. Uh, 24 gold. Seventy-two gold, nice. And then here, poor diviner. She has so many good non-move bottom actions, so we end up not moving a lot. And also twenty-seven experience. And we also gain a check mark for neutralizing a trap. I found. Okay, so. Let's go, let's take a look at some stuff. So in the end, um, Dimensional Divide was as good as I thought it would be. Bottom move is great. The extra shield is really valuable. Helps scale up my top level one shield card really well. And even if the Rift wasn't as, I mean, like was harder, well, we'll say harder to use. It's true that it doesn't necessarily even make it worse. Like in this situation, it basically allowed us to create a number of walls, like invisible walls throughout the scenario behind us to prevent enemies from following us, which is really useful. So yeah, even though it's like a little bit different than what I expected, it's still very good. This this card I'm super happy with. Critical mass of risk seems pretty important as well. Kind of. I'm not even sure that it like I don't even think it has to be so much that. Maybe we'll see. But I mean the good thing is until you have many rifts too, like this this bottom is so good that um yeah, I mean it was just Definitely really happy with this card. I mean, I know the other level 5 card would have been good as well, just for the bottom move attacks, which would have been kind of like, why not? But yeah, this card's really good. Okay. So, do we have anything else to take care of? Over here. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, we just need to do the Mind Thief level up. Obviously. Ooh, Mind Thief level 6? Ooh, that's an exciting level. I hadn't thought about that, but yeah. That is what I like. Yeah, probably. 
I'm looking forward to that. I mean, we've got Diviner and Craigart. So it's like, uh, it's going to be a good scenario for us. I'm definitely going to enjoy it. Level six, so good you do it twice. Exactly. <laughs> All right, 11, clear that. Okay, so let's do our level up quickly. So level six for the Mind Thief. Let's move all this stuff up out of the way. Level six for the Mind Thief. We have two choices. We have Dark Frenzy or Corrupting Embrace. So Dark Frenzy on top. This is an attack eight with the Mind's Weakness. If we have Dark, we actually do have Dark more often in this party than we normally do because we have a Diviner. So this can easily be an attack eight. The Ice Line there is irrelevant since we have the Frigid Blade at this point, but still. Um, just, I mean, I guess, anyway, yeah, I know. Anyway, in the end of the day, this is really kind of just like not that impressive actually as a top. I mean, uh, it's not bad, but realistically, because we have... Frigid Blade. Without Frigid Blade, this is more interesting, but when you have Frigid Blade, it's not so interesting because it's like, basically you have to have Dark and then it becomes an attack 4, and Frigid Apparition is already an attack 3, so it's not that impressive, but it's still fine. Um, but at the end of the day, the real hero on this card is the bottom. This bottom is insane. Move 3, attack 3, range 3, create ice, get experience, 10, ex 10 initiative, like... Of the four car four actions here, this is the action which will be played the most by a significant margin. Although here we have Dark, so actually we'll use the top of Corrupting Brace a lot as well. Anyway, this is so, so good. And um, especially since we have the Frigid Blade, this actually basically is effectively like, it's an attack five on bottom that also lets us move, which is just beautiful. Um, over on, on the other hand, on Corrupting Embrace, typically the bottom of Corrupting Embrace ends up being important at level 8 to set up your thing which requires Dark, but here we actually have Dark in our party thanks to the Diviner, so we actually won't even need to use this bottom as much, although the bottom is still really good. I mean, you've seen how much we need the move forward feedback loop, and this is a move forward feedback loop that's just better, although it doesn't have as good of an initiative. The initiative is actually pretty bad here, whereas feedback loop has a very good initiative for us. Uh, and then meanwhile on top, I mean, you know, you get to do attack 3, attack 4, which with Again, ice ends up being attack five, attack four, which is great. Or if you know, if we know we have a crit coming, we get to do attack three into attack six, which we then crit for twelve, which is just an insane amount of damage. Anyway, both these cards are really, really good. Um, at the end of the day, I generally do actually lean towards dark frenzy when I have frigid blade. If I don't have frigid blade, I think I lean towards corrupting embrace. Um, but I am going to take Dark Frenzy, again, just because this bottom action is so, so good. Ultimately, there's no wrong choice at this level. You can take either of these cards. It really doesn't matter. These cards are insane. One of the best level up... I mean, probably the... Maybe the single most powerful pre-9 level up choice in the game. Like, considering the average power level of both cards and how close they are in terms of, of strength. These cards are so, 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 so good. Incredibly good. And so we'll take Dark Frenzy again, just because the the ice every time, it's again, move three, attack five. It's amazing. The only wrong choice is not... Yes, exactly, Quadrin, you're correct. The only wrong choice with the level six cards for the Mind Thief is taking a level seven card instead of the other level six card. That's the only way you can make a wrong choice. Uh, yeah, I, like I can chat for literally a minute, Themris, afterwards. It's already almost midnight for me, and I haven't even had dinner yet, so it's going to be a little bit tough, but I can, like, like I said, for a minute. All right, um, and then we have a perk. We're going to take the other plus two ice. No, no, I mean, I can come for like one minute. Like, I mean, all right, like three minutes, to be fair. Um, we have 72 gold. I think we're still not quite to an enhancement that we want yet. So we'll chill there. Here, I mean, we can't do any enhancements. We got 56 gold, but we're limited on the number of cards we enhance. This is, I mean, sorry, um, Perverse Edge we still can't do. It's much more expensive since we've got to do 75 plus 75, so 150. Uh, nothing else really to buy at this point, so I think we're fine. All right, well, that'll be it. Thank you very much to everyone who tuned in. It was a pleasure. It was fun. Uh, I mean, the first scenario wasn't so tense. This one was really tense. This is why playing on high difficulty is great. Uh, saving for the Poison Enhancement. On the muddle bottom. <laughs> yeah. Poison is definitely what we're going for there. Nah. Um, so, yeah. Thank you very much to everyone who tuned in. It was a pleasure. Had a lot of fun. Thanks for being here for it. And interacting and everything. And for all the help. So, I will be back on Monday as usual. We'll be playing our base campaign. Which is basically just an Eclipse Tour de Force. Um...
then Tuesday will be custom class testing, potentially with uh, Marcel, with the Hive Guardian, which Marcel might have uh, some stuff available for. Otherwise, as usual, if you do want your class tested, so this la this past Tuesday, we actually only did one scenario and only tested two total classes because I didn't have many submissions. I, this does allow me to test my own classes, which I'll have to do at some point. Um, there doesn't have, I mean, so, well, let me finish my thing. So if you have a custom class and you want it tested, don't hesitate to send me a message on Reddit. This is the best way to do this. And I'll be happy to, um, sorry, to test your custom class. Uh, speaking of, there was something else I said I would help someone with that I need to do, that I said I would do after today. It, sorry, if you're the person who I was supposed to help today, all right, hold on, let me just turn off the, the recording.